it's your man Mark Black. You know what time it is. Welcome. Welcome to Sucker Free Saturday. Um, it's time for us to have a discussion this evening. First of all, before I even get into it, uh, anything today, we are going to uh, do the normal, do the needful, right? First of all, I want to remind you all that there are links in the description field below. Uh, to books, reports, resources to help you to understand not just why we fight, but what we're fighting for. And uh, so I want to encourage you to take advantage of those links, those opportunities there. Also, um, if you have followed my work and you're a member of the Angry Black Sheep and you feel that I'm worthy, there are also links at any time to support my broadcast. Full disclosure, money goes to me. I got a powerful need to eat sometime this month, right? And I appreciate every little bit of love and support that you uh, that you provide me, right? Um, there'll be other projects that'll be forthcoming that maybe we'll talk about other things. But for now, it's just helping a brother out and definitely appreciate it and I'm grateful. Um, if you haven't done so, consider becoming a patron of mine. I'm asking you to put $5 per month on it, just $5 one time a month. And that uh, that helps me to continue to do my work and uh, makes me feel real comfortable about my, my little position doing it too. So um, if you haven't done that, consider doing it. So uh, before we get into the broadcast today, let me shout some people out. The rules are, family, if you're new to the broadcast here, that just like when you come to somebody's house, knock on the door, let us know you're here. You don't have to participate in the chat. But we, we do appreciate if you pop in and let us know you're here so we can shout you out. So shout out to my esteemed brother, my beloved brother, Tazaba, who I have missed dearly. I hope you are well, fam. Welcome to the broadcast. Brother Paul, welcome to the broadcast. My sister Tam, also known as the Pretty Muslima, welcome. Sister, peace to you. Uh, brother Maurice, peace to you. Welcome to the broadcast. Brother Pat's in the house. Welcome to the broadcast. Miss Denny, mwah, mwah. love you. Welcome to the broadcast. Beloved sister Tanzonia's in the house. Welcome to the broadcast. Um, let's see here. Uh, Kanuri's in the house. Welcome to the broadcast. Sister Toolbox, definitely in the house as always. Welcome to the broadcast. Midtown, missed you fam. Welcome to the broadcast. Hood Heroes is in the house. Sister Sherry's in the house. Ty's in the house. Amin Tutanka's in the house. Welcome, welcome, welcome to all of you. <coughs> Excuse me. <clears throat> so, producers, present and accounted for, welcome to the broadcast, fam. So, without further ado, because I want to get you guys' input on it, it seems, fam, that it has been one hell of a Thanksgiving holiday weekend so far. Um, as you all are probably aware, Ms. Denny said, happy sucker free Saturday and uh, contributed 10 to the super chat. I appreciate that sister. Thank you so much. And happy mm -hmm. sucker free Saturday to you as well. As you all have probably heard and or seen for yourself, the black authority, also known as TBA, also known as Jason Black, did a broadcast where he essentially had some choice words for uh, Antonio specifically, mostly that I saw, but also included Yvette in his, uh, how would you say, his uh, scathing critique, right? Now, I'm certain that many of you are listening in today because you want to hear what I think. As to why, I have no clue because you guys already know what I think. But with that being said, we're going to talk about it. First, for those who haven't seen the broadcast, I'm going to give a synopsis, all right, as best I'm able. I don't want to misrepresent his position. I don't want to misrepresent anything that he said or did during the broadcast. So I will only speak on what I remember because I just actually finished watching the broadcast for the second time, right? I wanted to watch it twice. All right, Constance is in the house, by the way. Joan is in the house. Sister Alma's in the house. Kizzy, welcome in the house. Welcome to all of you. Solo Arm, Sister August, welcome to the broadcast. That's okay, Sister. I'm glad you're listening in, and I hope you feel better soon. Toolbox said scathing wasn't the word. Um, I would agree. I actually used that term because that's what some of you might feel that it was, that it was a scathing critique. Um, I will say that considering what I have heard previously 
from Jason Black, it was actually rather measured. And I know that's probably not saying a lot to some of you, but um, I don't think it was necessarily scathing. Uh, by the way, shout out to Warrior Scholar too. By the way, Real Talk is in the house as, as well. Midtown said, I lost respect for Jason Black after that. That's interesting. I'd like to find out why, Midtown. I hope you call in. Um, so essentially what he said was, that he felt that Antonio had sort of lost his way, to be quite honest. Um, he indicated that Antonio was, um, let me make sure I've got it all, because there was a lot. He indicated that Antonio was driven by his ego, um, that he had not accomplished much more beyond the introduction of the hashtag to us um, as, as, as his contribution to things. Um, he indicated that Antonio um, and Yvette's strategies and things like that were driven more by their, uh, yes, it was a lot. So fam, don't expect me to gathered everything, right? I'm going to share with you some of the things that he mentioned. And uh, let's see. So he intimated that they um, appeared to be in, uh, how would you say, uh, in the higher of, right? Or in some way, the uh, tool for the use of Byron Allen. He indicated that Antonio was not a practicing attorney. Again, I don't have any evidence one way or the other one on that. So if you want to present some evidence in the chat, please do. I just know that he's been a law school. He's graduated from law school. I don't know if he's ever actually practiced law or whatever the case may be. And here's the thing, fam. I would encourage you, all of you, whether you are partisans of Yvette and Antonio or not, I would encourage you all to go and watch the broadcast. Why? Because here's the thing, fam. You get nowhere by only listening to people you agree with. Period. Right? Whether you ultimately end up agreeing with TBA or not, go and check it out. Decide for yourself. Watch it to gain your own understanding. By the way, shout out to b Man's in the house. VLB's in the house. Namaste, Brother John. Welcome to the broadcast. So when I talk to you today, fam, about what I think of the broadcast, understand that I'm speaking from my opinion. I watched it. Right? So if you have an issue with what he said, treat what he said with however you treat something you have an issue with, but go hear what he said. Don't take my word for it. Don't take somebody else's word for it. You go check it out yourself, even if it's no more to, than to listen to it and thumbs it down. Because here's the thing to note, fam, like always, no matter where you go and what you listen to, there are always two sides or more in a lot of cases to every story, right? Most people will say that there's this person's side, this person's side, and the truth at a minimum, okay? So here's the thing. There was one thing that TBA suggested that we do at the end of his broadcast. He said that we need to regroup and we need to take time for introspection. And that is what I want to talk about today, right? I personally did not find anything that he said objectionable. Now, pause. Does this mean that I believe he was right about everything? No, I don't. You forget, fam, that I have been and remain a proponent and advocate 
for our justice claim. I have not wavered in that endeavor, ever. <laughs> I've established my bona fides. It's unquestionable. I have been consistent in saying over and over again that what I do has to do with this justice claim. Period, point blank, full stop. And since the chat's gonna be full today, fam, if you really want to make sure that I address your point, please, even if it's just 50 cents or whatever, hit the super chat so I can know to speak to your point directly. It's not that I won't ever so often, you know, hit the, the chat, but there's a lot that everybody's gonna say. And I wanna make sure that those who really feel the need to speak have that avenue to do so, okay? Now, here's the thing that I find very interesting. All of you who watched the broadcast took away a point of view. You either took away Jason's point of view, or if you are an, a, an advocate for, or a defender of, or a supporter of Yvette and Tone, you took away a point of view in support of and uplifting them. How many of you though actually walked away with a mind to follow the basic advice that TBA gave during that broadcast. Because I can tell you for a certainty, he was not wrong in his basic advice. Whether you feel he was right about Antonio or Yvette or not, whether you feel he the way he did it was right or not, doesn't matter. There was some basic key points of advice that he offered during that broadcast. How many of you were willing to say, I agree with him 100%. And that advice is really good. I'm going to make sure I take that to heart. Or, I can't stand that nigga. He makes me sick. That motherfucker's beyond the pale. But that advice he gave was really good, and I need to pay attention to that. How many of you did that? Because he gave some really solid points of advice. Some really solid information. And here's something to note, fam. The fact is, is that in that basic premise, he was 100% spot on. In his basic premise, he was spot on. Here was his basic premise. Discard everything he said about Antonio and Yvette. Disregard anything he said about Tariq or about himself. We're going straight to the core pieces, right? We're not gonna talk about the um, accusations, if you consider them accusations or the facts he presented, if you consider them facts, we're not gonna talk about those, right? We're gonna talk about the core, the root bits of information that were key, that were not directed toward any particular person except you and except me. Here was those root pieces of information, fam. The root, the first root item that I want to address is how many of us attach ourselves to positions, ideas, people, and so on without doing our due diligence, without doing the actual work to understand just what it is that we're cleaving to. These are all, by the way, in the form of questions. To show you a real interesting corollary, fam, <laughs> Antonio starts off a lot of his broadcasts, or at least he used to, by asking questions, sometimes as many three, four questions that he endeavored to answer during his broadcast. And the key pieces of advice that TBA gave us during his broadcast were also in the form of four questions. How many of us do the due diligence necessary to understand what it is that we are signing on for when we adhere to an ideology, to a thought, to a trend, to people, so on and so forth? How many of us do that?
Here was another root piece of advice that TBA gave us. How do you know when we are being led down the primrose path? Right? How do we know? We know when ego is involved. That is clear. He repeated multiple times throughout his broadcast that ego is the death, the death knell of any movement for the people. So wherever you see egos, hey, no personal attacks in the chat. I won't tolerate that. Everybody here has a right to say what they want to say and how they want to say it within reason, all right? No slander, no name calling, none of that. Show, show me respect. Even if you can't show each other respect, this is my house, all right? So no personal attacks. Ego. Ego drives the need for us to be right at all costs. Ego drives our willingness to ignore basic evidence of things that we need to be paying attention to. Ego. The crazy part of this is that everybody's asking whether or not Jason Black has an ego or not. He's human, isn't he? Which means he has an ego. But here's the thing, is his ego driving what he's doing in this particular matter? You can actually answer that question for yourselves. I encourage you to answer that question for yourselves, but it's a valid one. And here's the more important question. Among all of your pet influencers, right, all the people that you listen to, how many of them are driven by ego? Right? It's easy to point the finger at TBA because he calls himself the Black Ayatollah and speaks of himself in the Royal We and all of this, that, and the third, right? But it's a little bit more difficult when there's a call for you to hold that same light, that same energy to the people that you like, the people that you care for, right? How many of you are willing to do this across the board to hold everyone that presents, including me, including me, especially me, to that same standard? Because a lot of what we see, fam, a lot of what we see that you all are calling division and strife and confusion and this, that, and the third is driven by the fact that people won't do the basic analysis to understand if the nigga's in the room. And that's facts. I had someone tell me in the chat, I think it was VLB, that said, I should just come out and say I have a problem with Yvette and Tone. I don't have a problem with them as individuals. I've got plenty of issues with some of the stances that they hold, some of the strats that they suggested, and so on and so forth, and I've made those publicly clear, and I'm not going to rehash them here. I don't need to be disagreeable in order to disagree with them. Why? Because I am not cleaving to them as personalities. For me, it has always been about, it's been about the ideas, about the information. Isn't that what we've all been taught as ADOS proponents and advocates, fam? To ground ourselves in the data? How do you ground yourselves in the data when you sit there and you ground yourself in the personality of an individual, the data is such that even if Yvette, Tone, JB, PBA, any of your pet personalities, Mark Black, were to disappear tomorrow, the data is still the data. It would still require analysis and it would still require and demand action. But yet, I see with my own two eyes, people that I have followed, that I support, that I love, because I'm human too, I have my emotions invested in some of these people, 
right? Continuing to remain partisans of individual personalities rather than cleaving and holding to the ideas that are the golden key that unlocks the door to our ultimate liberation. And it's a shame It is an absolute disgusting shame because in his basic premises, Jason Black was not wrong. He even acknowledged during his broadcast that whatever standard he lays out, he is just as accountable for it as anyone else. Which means that those of you who feel that Jason Black's ego is involved in everything have every right to critique them. It's simple as that. It's as simple as that. People have differences of ideas, right? People have differences of ideas. We have differences in ideas in every single broadcast, right? But here's a difference, right? Not to toot my own horn, because I'm just a member of the herd, okay? I don't need nothing over here. That's obvious from how y'all going crazy in the chat today, right? I don't leave nothing over here. But as a member of the herd, over here, when we have differences of opinion, you know what we have? We have discussion. That's right. I open up the phone lines, and anybody who disagrees with what I've said or disagree with what somebody else has said, and this, that, the third can call in and they can have their say. And not only can they have their say, but they can have their say with respect. And then what we have is we have a combat of ideas. And may the best idea win. May the best chain of logic with the most correct premises and the proper conclusion win. May the best critical thought win. And when we get off the phone, we are at, we're here. We get off on one accord. We get off on one accord. That's the difference. Because guess what? I don't have no ego involved in this. What I want is what's best for all of us as a collective. Like I said, I've established my bona fides. B-Man's upset saying that I'm caping for Jason Black's BS. No, what I'm doing is something that a lot of you don't seem to be capable of doing. And if you don't like that I'm saying it, I don't give a damn. I am actually holding myself to a standard which says that I want the truth no matter where it comes from. If the man is wrong, all you have to do is present the evidence. You don't need to make it a big, long, drawn-out production. I'm not going to make it a long drawn pro, uh, draw, a long drawn out production. Peace, by the way, to Moni. Darker Visions is in the house. Welcome so much to the broadcast of Sucker Free Saturday, fam. So for all of you who think that Mark Black is caping, that I got hate for Yvette and Tone and love for PBA and this, that, and the third, I invite you to continue keeping whatever, thinking on whatever you think on. Because see, one thing I've learned is you can't unify people that don't want to be unified. You can't make people work together that don't want to work together. Those people who refuse to use critical thinking, those people who refuse to adhere to the ideology, to the information, to the data over personalities, I can't help you. I'm not the guy. I can bring you to water, but I can't make you drink it. Thank you so much, Kizzy. I appreciate it. 100% underlined twice. That's facts. Midtown, if Tone is a well-established lawyer, I've been watching Tone for like two years now. I haven't really seen, and nor have I required or demanded much evidence that he actually practices law. It hasn't been clearly established with me. Let's just keep it a buck. It hasn't been well established that he actually actively pra practices law. Whenever Antonio gives his resume, he definitely mentions freeway uh, cracks in the system and all this and that. He mentions that he graduated from uh, from university and all of that. Tone's known to run down his resume. I would figure that if he had an active practice, we'd know about that too. I'm not saying that that 
that makes him bad or anything like that. I'm just saying. Like, where's this well-established legal career that he has as a lawyer? I'm just saying. I, I don't have I don't have a horse in this race. Because I'm married to the work. When I have any new black sheep join the fold, I ask them to commit to the uplift of our people. That's all. I don't care about what they worship or don't worship, what they eat or don't eat, any of that. I really don't. I really don't. And Tone's credentials are just like any other credentials. Where is my well-established career? Why are you worried about my career? I don't make my career the point of what I do. I don't come on my broadcast and the first thing you hear from me is my resume establishing what career and credentials I got to speak to you. You can either listen to me or don't. But if you do listen, I require that you do your due diligence, that you don't sit here and take my word as gospel. So you can shade me all you want. I'm immune to it. I'll have no problem with it. If I'm, if I'm confusing, Lisa, it's because you're insisting on being confused. Because I've said only the same thing repeatedly over and over and over again that any standard we hold anybody to, we hold everybody to. That's the standard, right? If we're going to have a standard, whether you rep ADOS or FBA or anything else, right, whatever it is that you rep, then that standard needs to be held across the board. You can't turn to everybody you perceive as your enemies and say who you, but not turn to the people you perceive as your friends and associates and companions and not ask them who are they too. You can't be on board with questioning everybody else's credentials and bona fides, but then when that spotlight is directed toward Yvette and Antonio, you got a problem with it. If it's good for the goose, fam, it's good for the gander. That's all I'm saying. That, if that's confusing to you, I don't know how to help you with that. To be honest, I never, look, Tone's credentials to me are not under question. Why? Because I don't care about his credentials. Tone shares my lineage. He could be a bum off the corner. And if he's saying, if he's saying anything like about our justice claim and so on and so forth, I'm with it. See, that's a problem. Because a, a lot of people that I see who are have aligned themselves with ADOS, the political movement, really be on some elitist ass shit. There are many of you who, if you listen to me in isolation, right? If you just listen to me and you enjoy my work and so on and so forth, you will make accolades about me. I, I don't go in much for praise, right? But you'll say that I'm intelligent, that I'm really smart, that I know my stuff, and so on and so forth. I see it in the chat and I'm grateful for it, right? What do you think my educational credentials are? I'm a high school dropout with a GED who has some college, but I have not a let school interfere with my education. So I read a lot, study a lot, and ask a lot of questions to a lot of scholars in, across many subjects. So Tone's credentials for me were never an issue. Just keeping it a buck. Why are we idolizing these people so highly that they're beyond question? That, that right there is disturbing to me, fam. That is absolutely disturbing to me. And you're talking to a man who has repeatedly shown 
nothing but the utmost of respect and esteem for Antonio and Yvette. So you don't get to come to me saying, ah, now you cutting them down too. No, you don't get to do that because I'm not going to. But I can call things like I see it. I got eyes. I got ears. I can pay attention just like anybody else. Here's the question. Why won't you look up yourselves the information that Jason Black presented? Like you said, Antonio's record as an attorney is something that is easily provided and thus would rebut the fact that he doesn't have a law career. Drop the information and let that be. But where's all the emotional heat coming from regarding his broadcast? This is what I don't understand. This is what I don't get. If the man is wrong, and most likely he was at least wrong about one thing during his broadcast, he's only human, right? I think it would be easy as hell to rebut anything he said during that broadcast. So here's the question. Why can't I go on my timeline? Because I mostly follow ADOS people. Why can't I go on my timeline on Twitter today and see nothing but toxicity? Nothing but animus, hatred, toxicity. A people who have been taught from day one to be married to the data, to be grounded in the data, I see very little of it. What I see is a bunch of accusations, a bunch of tit for tat, and so on and so forth. The same shit that you accuse him of, you all are doing. There's a whole host of things that you could probably critique Jason Black upon. Present your evidence. We were supposed to take this shit to a higher level, fam. We were supposed to take this to a higher place. We were supposed to have measured, reasoned discussion based around information and data and analysis. Not this emotional personality worship crap. Damn it, I feel like Obi-Wan today. We were supposed to, to balance the force, not become the dark side. But we can't let personality worship go long enough to tolerate a few damn questions directed at our pet, our pet influencers. Really? This makes no sense to me. We, we really need, fam, we really need, if you take nothing else from his broadcast, we really need this moment of regroup, of introspection. We, the ones who have been involved in this political advocacy, the ones who of us who have been doing the work, we really need to pull back and regroup. And we need to introspect and remember why it is that we're here. Because right now, fam, what we looking like is we're looking like everything that everybody ever said about us. That we're elitist, that, um, you know, we're abrasive and combative, that data doesn't mean anything, that we're just parroting talking points, that we're all being led around by two Svengali's, that's what, that's what you look like right now. And that's a fact. We need this moment, fam, to thank you, Darlene, for subscribing to the, broad, to, the, to the channel. Welcome to the Angry Black Sheep. Sherry, I'm with you. I didn't sign up for this. I didn't sign up for toxicity and poison all over my timeline. I don't care about any of these personalities out here. Jermaine asked me, what do I think of Tone's rebuttal on Twitter? I can't tell you. I'm blocked. Tone blocked me about two weeks ago. I earned mine, so no shade here, no disrespect, but I haven't seen his rebuttal. And to be quite honest, fam, I don't really care. The reason why I'm doing this broadcast today is not for me, it's for you. I need y'all to have a place 
where we have that space for introspection. There's no room for hero worship of your pet personalities over here as the angry black sheep. Kizzy, Kizzy, you shocked that I'm blocked by tone? Don't be. I stand actually what looks like good company because I don't think that anybody who says that tone doesn't deal well with criticism or whatever the case may be, I don't think they're wrong. I've seen people respectfully approach him and say, I don't understand this. This doesn't make sense to me. Blocked. So, yeah, absolute, absolutely. I mean, let's just keep it above. Thank you, MGTOWN. I appreciate the love, fam. I appreciate the love. It is time for us to have this space, fam, for actual open introspection. We need to have a place where all of your pet personalities, including Mark Black, if you put me up on that, because I am not your pet personality, right? But if you put me up on that space, we need to have a place where we can actually take these sacred cows and at least examine them, if not slay them. Because in this advocacy, in this, in this place, this space, this transformational moment, if you will, we don't have room for people's egos. We don't have room for people's personality. We don't have room for people's flaws, controversial points, and so on and so forth. Thank you, KR Jr. You said, this is controversial, but would you do a book review of Nora Shelton, America's Little Black Book? Let's get all points of view out there. I don't have access to it, but I'm, I'm interested in reading it. So don't be surprised, K Jr., if I actually do do that. Don't be surprised. Kizzy, this is why I F with you. We need this space, fam. We need this space. Those sacred cows need to die. Not literally. I'm not saying go out and kill anybody. Don't, don't start nothing. <laughs> it won't be nothing, right? But let's keep it a full-ass buck. Any one of us, me, Antonio, Yvette, PBT, TBA, Tariq, anybody you follow, all of them are bigger than, than this whole thing, bigger than what we're doing. Seriously. All of, all of us are bigger than this. BLB, perhaps I'm not for you, fam, because I've already addressed that in multiple broadcasts. I love Yvette. I, my personal feeling toward Yvette is that I love her. Do I disagree with some of the strats and stuff like that that she's laid out? Of course I have, and I haven't bit my tongue about it. So if you feel in some way I'm being disingenuous, then perhaps I'm not the person you should be watching because I want you to have trust in who it is that you get your information from. I'm not going to keep having to rehash the fact that I have personal this and personal that. This ain't about personalities. Why are you not getting the point here? Why is Yvette not, not able to be critiqued? Why is Tone not able to be critiqued? Because believe it or not, fam, this is going to sound really fucking strange. But I don't see... Tariq's people really all over caring all that much about Tariq getting criticized. Like, Tariq gets criticized by white folks, black folks, Latino folks, Asian folks, so on and so forth. His audience don't really care. Tariq is a big ass troll anyway. So for him getting a task, getting, you know, getting attacked or whatever the case may be, they don't really much care. The reason why they cared over much about this is because it is a true fact that FBA and ADOS cleave together so damn tightly that you couldn't differentiate one from the other one. We all went and was all do on the same shit. So then when Tone did that tweet talking about that Tariq was co-signing Donald Trump when Tariq was known for trolling, and then when he was told, nah, fam, that's, that's not what's cracking, right? You, you off point with this one, fam, right? He didn't double down. I can't save anybody who's insisting on slitting their own damn throat. Tone fucked up on that one. And I don't think it's wrong for anybody who loves Tone to admit that. 
I don't really think it was wrong for people to admit that shit. Tone was out of pocket. ADOS and, and FBA were like this. I watched over the last 10 months as FBA came right on board with everything that we were doing and back in our play. Anybody we had fire shade and smoke for, FBA was right there. Same with the B1 Brigade. Now, I will admit that ADOS were the ones out there actually putting boots on the ground. And to how to keep it a full all ass buck, I'm in absolute awe of the work that the ADOS locals have been doing, fam. <laughs> Y'all are the thing that gives me, a usual realist, a bunch of optimism. Because I see y'all out there. Shout out to ADOS uh, Sacktown. Shout out to ADOS SoCal, LA. Shout out to ADOS North Carolina. Shout out to ADOS Detroit. Shout out to ADOS DC. Man, goddamn, y'all are the truth. Y'all are the absolute truth. Thank you for the love, Sister Tanzania. Things, she said, thing is, we are being attacked on multiple fronts, so folks are really sensitive. This was done on purpose by PBT to make folks react mm -hmm. out of pocket. Okay, I feel you, sister. Here's the thing. I don't think you should be so sensitive. Last time I checked, PBT, Professor Black Truth, uh, TBA, Tariq, none of them are politicians. If our work was about pushing forward political advocacy for our people in this justice claim, ultimately, what does it really matter? Whether it's Twitter blue checks or, or anybody, right? What, what, what do we care? What do we care about what they say? Ah, I take that back. I take that back, fam. I take that back. Because I don't think you, the people, over much care about what these blue checks have to say, right? Real talk. Like, I don't really think that y'all over, y'all care over much. But I think once your personalities indicate that it's an issue, then a lot of you start to care then. I truly believe that. I truly believe that. I know, because I have done it. Like I said, fam, I've been there on board this train since the beginning. I've attacked who they attacked, who they felt we needed to tune up, give them fire, shade, and smoke. Of course I did. We need to take the brother's advice and pull back and regroup. Fam, I... I've got my ideas as to how it happened, but to to prevent further just bullshit and rancor, I'm not gonna throw it out there, but we are all off track. When I became a proponent of ADOS, an advocate for us, I signed on to press home the greatest damn justice claim that America has ever seen, period. I didn't sign on to bootlick for Byron Allen, and you can say whatever the hell you like. It ain't just about your civil rights, though. Sorry, but something went wonky with that. Your political capital, if you've been advocating with this whole Comcast Byron Allen thing, your political capital got wasted. And I'm sorry, but Yvette and Tone are responsible for that. They need to own up to that. What the hell does that got to do with our justice claim? It ain't like America ain't never indicated a willingness to completely violate any damn law, whether it's the 13th, 14th, 15th Amendment, so on and so forth, or whatever, whenever they feel like it when it comes to us. We keep getting told that Byron Island, it ain't about Byron Island, it's about your civil rights, it's about your civil rights, yet... Why do they keep throwing Byron Island up in our face? Why do Tone keep acting like him and Byron Island is best buddies? I'm just keeping a full ass book. 
That was bullshit to waste our political capital on the Byron Allen case. Whether you feel that it affects us or don't, I get it. I get it. There were some of you who said, yeah, I forget it. I feel that, right? You know, I feel it. Let's do it. But our political capital in the main was wasted on that. I remember when Byron Allen walked out of the motherfucking Supreme Court that day when my brothers and sisters was out there freezing their ass off on the stairs of the Supreme Court. Which, by the way, if this was supposedly one of the most pivotal decisions the Supreme Court was going to make in our lifetime, affecting our rights in such a way that it would change everything forever, where the hell was Yvette and Tone? Oh, wait, I hate them because I brought up an obvious damn question. Where were they? We had people out there from Philly, people out there from DC. We had people out there from North Carolina. We had people out there from everywhere. We had people that flew in. When Byron Allen walked out of that courthouse and he stood there for that photo op, and he started talking about the importance of the case. How many of you heard him say African Americans and other minorities? Those other minorities weren't out there freezing their asses off, fam. Those other minorities wasn't giving a fuck about that case. It was you. And he didn't even have enough respect for you to keep their name out of his mouth. At this pivotal moment, when you are out there putting your bodies, your asses on the line for him and for his case, he couldn't even keep those other, those other groups out of his mouth. For African Americans and other minorities, ain't that a bitch? How many of you took the day off? How many of you went out there and did such and such and so on and so forth to support this shit? burning up your time, your resources, and so on and so forth. So that you can see Byron Allen surrounded by a bunch of motherfucking linebackers and tell you, thanks for coming out here and muling once again for everybody else. Thank you so much, Kizzy. I appreciate it. I'm not complaining, fam. I'm asking questions. I'm not complaining because see, here's the thing for me. I wasn't going to waste my political capital back in Byron Allen. I had an issue with the whole thing from the beginning and you didn't know it until after the whole damn thing went down. Why? Because that's what being on code is all about. Even if I don't agree, I'm still going to try to do the best I can to back they play. Remember when they had the hearing on HR 40? ADOS was representing like nobody's business in that gallery. I was so proud to be on Twitter, to sit there watching all my people standing in line, waiting to get into that, waiting to get into the gallery, to represent, to be there. This, this legislation that had languished for decades that we as ADOS were asked to put our political advocacy behind. Finally got a hearing. And my people was there full force. Fam, I'm telling you, pride level was on 11. I was so damn proud. Question, where was Yvette and Tone? They was at the Angela Project. So they had y'all putting boots on the ground, had us expending a whole bunch of political capital and time, having us going at these politicians every single day. Trust me, I was there right along with you, fam. I live on the west side, so I wasn't gonna fly all the way to DC for the hearing. I'm broke. I'm just keeping it a buck. That's not me. I'm not your man. I can advocate in so many other ways, but I couldn't be there. But trust me, could I have been there? I'd have been there. Because that was the culmination of all the work. But they could go to the Angela conference. They couldn't be there. Right out there in front. That don't make no sense. 
And it's not wrong for you to ask those questions. It is not wrong. Money, here's something to consider, right? Here's something to consider, money. What if, what if it is you and I and those of us who are so on and so forth out there putting boots on the ground? What if it is us that is actually making the moves, pushing things around, so on and so forth, right? What if that's the case? Now, here's another question to ask. If we have gotten enough education to be able to put boots on the ground, to organize local chapters, to actually get in politicians' faces, shout out to my brother, Jamie on, right? And others who are doing the same work. Shout out to brother Travis, also known as Black Dollars University, for confronting that producer who tried to malign the character of our ancestress, Harriet Tubman, right? So if we're out there doing this, and we're out there doing that, at what point do we decide whether or not we need them? If you're doing the work, you've got the educational basis, we can honor them for helping us to get it. But at what point do you cut bait and be like, okay, we made it across the stream. You don't get out and carry the canoe with you, you leave it in the water and you keep it pushing. That's a great question. But their proponents say they lead the whole shit. So we can't ever leave them to where they are as cheerleaders. Because I don't sit here and pretend that I run this. Y'all, y'all, we, the people, are the ones doing the work. You feel me? We're the ones doing the work. So we do all the work, but then we have to sit here and fight with other people about who gets the accolades. You deserve the accolades. All of you who were standing out there on the stairs of the Supreme Court, you're the ones I honor. All the people that's been going back and forth to these different political events, throwing up our agenda in these people's faces, you're the ones who deserve the accolades. Why do we need to big them up? Why aren't we bigging you up? <laughs> I'm just keeping it a bug, fam. Shout out to the people that's actually putting boots on the ground. Like I said, future, as clear as my language is, if you think I'm so in confusion, I can't help you. because it's not so in confusion to ask basic ass questions. I would figure that a person trained in political science and a person who's a, 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 a trained attorney should be able to answer basic ass questions. I, I don't care what you say about, uh, you know, uh, uh, their bona fides have been established, this, that, and the third. That's all cool, that's all fine and dandy, but they still should be able to answer basic ass questions. People shouldn't be getting blocked and dismissed because they asking questions. Let's just keep it a bug. Hell, I'm gonna be honest with you. I think it's problematic as fuck that the title or the acronym that we use for our lineage, if you're ADOS, is now conflated with a political agenda that some people don't fucking support. And then on top of that, because of the conflation, and you tell me I'm for, I'm sowing confusion, because of the conflation, now you're having people who are proponents of the political movement telling other people who share their lineage and heritage that they can't be ADOS. Make it make sense. But I'm the one so in confusion by asking general, basic questions. Meanwhile, 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 people are full on toxic. No more advocacy, no more work. There's a challenger 
to Sheila Jackson Lee in her district. How many of you know that? A Republican. How many of you know that? Now let me ask you, ADOS folk, how many of you willing to engage with that Republican? Sheila Jackson Lee has been a notorious enemy to us. Right now, she's the reason why our bill that we paid for, right? We paid political capital for HR 40. So that's our bill, whether we like it or not. She's the reason why our bill can't get markup and get to a vote on the floor. There's also a dim challenger. How many of y'all gonna engage with those two challengers of a known enemy to our people and our political interests? How many of you even knew that she had any challengers? But there was a whole bunch of people who were going in about Sheila Jackson Lee handed out turkeys. I don't care about her handing out turkeys. Tanzania said, we are grassroots. They are doing federal and upper echelon. Okay. I'd love to see 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 what the fruits of that advocacy on the federal and upper echelon is. I'm not saying they're not doing it. I'm saying I can't wait to see the fruits of it. Kira said, Tone said he reached out to him. You said that like I'm supposed to know that. I told you I'm blocked by Tone. But more importantly, are you reaching out to him? Do you live in that district, Kira? Because if so, I'm certain that whoever the, the challengers are to Sheila Jackson Lee would love to hear from you. I hope she has eight of them. And I hope that ADOS continues to do the work. But from what I'm seeing on social media, I'm not seeing any work. No, what I'm seeing is drivel, toxicity, poison. Look, I'm a realist with a really thick skin. And I mean thick skin. Like you can basically call me a nigga on my own channel. I don't really want much give a damn. And if I think the environment is toxic, fam, it's toxic. It is toxic as fuck. <laughs> I'm, I'm not kidding you. It, if, how is it, fam, that you don't think that we, after all this shit going on between personalities, how is it that you don't think we don't need a space for introspection? Tell me, how is it that you don't see the need to say, you know what, wait, 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 wait. I didn't sign up for this. <laughs> right? Like, <laughs> how many? Thank you, Tanzonia. That's good information. She said, I'm in Houston, ADOS. See, shout out to Houston, ADOS. Y'all brothers and sisters is getting in some hellified work down here. Peace out, Sister Kira. I don't think I was being angry or defensive or rude. I'm letting you know. I, I didn't know that Tony reached out to him. You said, bruh, like, I was supposed to know that. I didn't know. But thank you for the information. I appreciate it. Houston's doing the damn thing. That's, that's got me dope. That's got, that's got me optimistic. Seriously, I'm serious. The chapters got me really optimistic. Because, man, it is mind-boggling. It's amazing to watch y'all do what y'all do. Seriously, I, I'm always floored by the work that's coming out of the chapters. I mean, the chapters actually got a local NAACP chapter to go against national. Fam, do you know how crazy that is? That's never happened in the history of the NAACP. And it was boots on the ground that did it. Damn, <laughs> I'm amazed. But we need that space, fam. We need that space. We need to have a place. Richard, welcome to the broadcast, fam. You're not late. Have you seen the things in the, those in the mainstream said about ADOS? You have to defend against that. And Tone did reach out and apologize before JB made his video. Defend against that, huh? You, you think that's what Tone did? 
thanking Ferris Stockman for a fucking hit piece is defending yourself? If that's the case, you and I have a different idea of what defense is, fam. Just keeping it a buck. That's just real talk. You know, there was a couple of things that have been brought up, such as the stance toward business people, towards capitalism and things like that, that a lot of people see as, how would you say it? That they see as opposing points of view, right? I want to talk about that briefly. Shout out to my brother, Chad. I want to talk about that briefly, right? Bam, do you realize that black capitalism or the support of black capitalism and the support of politics are not mutually exclusive? They're not mutually exclusive. And so anybody that tries to present the argument, which I will admit to that I have done previously in the past, I've had to change where I'm at. I've had to have an evolution on it because I had to think about it. Anybody who tries to say that either one position or the other position is the only way, you're both wrong. There is definitely a wealth chasm that won't be solved purely by our capitalistic efforts alone, by entrepreneurship and business. We need politics. But we also need, as best we're able, to utilize what capital we do have to the betterment of our people. The two points of view are not mutually exclusive. I think that you can be someone who advances capitalism, because we live in a capitalist system, capitalism as a mechanism or a vehicle for the uplift of black people, and also still be about politics. Because there's valid critiques on both sides but most of those critiques come down to the fact that most black capitalists treat capitalism like white folks do. They get, they come up and then they forget about the rest of us. That's an issue. As black folk, as the black descendants of United States slavery, we don't have that luxury. If we do capitalism, we have to be doing it in a way that is beneficial to the collective as a group. So that's a valid critique of, of black capitalists. Right? But at the same token, to say that we somehow are supposed to wait for Uncle Sam to get some act right before we try to better our condition in some way, shape, or fashion is disingenuous as well, as if politics is the only way we're going to be able to get this done. I think that both positions are, you know, they're conducive. I think we should use both that we should engage with brothers and sisters who are out there who, in spite of all the obstacles and everything that's been put in their way, in spite of the undercapitalization, in spite of the discrimination, in spite of the racism, were able to carve out some degree of success. Those people deserve honor. Darker Visions, thank you so much for the, the donation, man. You said, if they're doing politics, why aren't there ADOS-sponsored candidates running on our platform? That's a good question, too. That's a good question, too. Shout out to my man, Michael Hicks. Welcome to the broadcast, fam. Glad to have you. Michael Hicks said black millionaires and a few billionaires are not going to see the national black economy. Having an economy requires ownership and infrastructure. I think that they can try. I don't think that their efforts are just doomed to failure from the start. And I think it does those people a disservice to say otherwise. Sure, there's a wealth chasm. We explored it on my last broadcast. I showed the data. It's indisputable. Indisputable. But I think 
that we need our black entrepreneurs. I think we need our black capitalists. I think we do. That's facts. Hey, I'm, I'm gonna open up the lines here. <laughs> I'm wondering if this is a good idea after what I've seen in the chat. I can take one call at a time, fam. So give me a moment here. First come, first serve. Fam, all I want is for people to ask questions. I, and I want us to do the work to get the answers. That's what I'm saying, fam. Straight up and down. It ain't got nothing to do with loving anybody's, you know, personality or whatever the case may be. I want us to ask questions and I want us to have feel like that we have the right to seek the answers. Nobody is above reproach. Nobody is above asking questions. And if your people that you feel are personalities or influencers won't answer basic questions, that should be an issue for you. 425-296-1980 fam is the number. If you want to chime in and have a discussion about this, that, and the third, the floor is yours. That's right, Sister Tamara Sheely. I actually need to reach out to her, Tanzonia. Tanzonia said, we had a candidate run in Florida, and one is now running in Georgia, Tamara Sheely. I actually am going to uh, try to reach out to the sister. I'd like to do an interview with her. <laughs> right, Cease? I don't know, fam. I don't know if it's a good idea to open up the phone lines today, but... You know, this is what the angry black sheep do. We take we take everybody, right? We don't have I don't I don't care about people having disagreements. I want us to have discussion. So the lines are open, fam, or I should say the line, 425-296-1980. We got a lot of folk out there doing a lot of great things. All of you ADOS proponents or whatever need to let that toxicity go, in my opinion, and continue to do the work. Yvette and Tom can defend their damn self if they need defending. Calling from 301, it's your man Mark Black. What's your name, where you calling from, and what's on your mind? Caller, make sure you turn down your background too so I can uh, make sure to keep good audio for the fam. Well, hello there, brother. Hey, elder brother. It's good to hear from you, man. The elder brother from another <laughs> mother. What's on your mind? Well, hello there, brother. Hey, elder brother. Yes, I'm, I'm back again. Yes, I, I I came in a little late on you, but uh, one, uh, I was, uh, I've been on YouTube quite a bit lately, and, uh, and uh, I'll, uh, uh, I was watching this 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 uh, economic professor who, who's been around quite a while. His name is uh, Richard Wolf or whatsoever. I'm familiar with Richard but he was Wolf. Yeah, he was talking about what he was talking about during the uh, when America had reached the Great Depression and so forth. Mm -hmm. You know, and uh, about 25 percent of the population was unemployed and so forth. And then the Rose, when Roosevelt came into office and came into power, there was this coalition. You were talking about this coalition of the Union, the Communist Party, and the Socialist Party came together, and they put pressure. They they had enough, they had enough uh, support and everything to put pressure on Roosevelt. So he came up with this new deal. Mm -hmm. So. Uh, my question is how how do you I, i'm for i'm for building coalition I, I see like when we get i see like when eight eight us members get into all this personality bickering and conflict and so forth it's really it's really affecting our, our ability to be a coalition it's really tearing down coalition power if you look at dr king Dr. King, he, he was he was open to listen to Stokely Carmichael. To uh, he he was his organization his, his organization was SCLC, but he was he had the Pullman Porters and all of them come on. He was able to build that coalition and so forth to get their support. But Dr. King was out there on the front line also. <laughs> he, you know he he went to jail he went to jail many times 
and uh, and had dogs. He, he reached a point where he said he was, he was tired of going to jail and having dogs sick on him. But he was out there on, on the front line, even even when he, you know, even when he got, you know, when he was when he was brutally murdered and so forth. But uh, my concern is, I I think we we as ADOS members we need to start. I know you're talking about going introspective, which is good, but we need to start looking at looking at how we're going to if we're going into this main we're going into 2020. And we got to get ready for this surge or this push. How are we going to build coalitions? You know, how, how are we going to be able to go to the HBCUs and get the students involved and so forth? That's how are we going to be able to, you know, that's a good question. How are we going to be? How are we going to be able? If we can't, if we can't build, if we got, if we got Dr. Claude Anderson over here, Yvette Antonio here, and got. To wreak here and so forth. I, I just, I just see as minor differences that really that's keeping a lot of, a lot of, you know, as minor differences, personality conflict and stuff that's really stopping us from being a building a strong coalition and so forth. You know, so my if if I if I may, right? Because I, I think you bring up a really good point about the fact that. A lot of great work is being stopped by what appears to be nothing more than personality conflicts, right? So let me ask you right. a question. What's preventing, mm -hmm. say, ADOS North Carolina from inviting Dr. Claude Anderson to come to speak with them? Is it, what's preventing? Yeah, what's, is, is there preventing anything that you're aware of that prevents them from doing that? No, it's not. From, I, I'm quite sure he would be. He he would have welcomed the, the I, I invitation would, I would to come. I agree with you. Um, here's another question: What would be the issue with say, Ados SoCal inviting Dr. Joy DeGroote to come and speak with them? Do you see any issue that you know other than availability, this, that, and the third? Do you see any issue with them being able to do that? No. No, I don't see any issue with them being able. You, you know, uh, uh, Ados, even even those who are out, who deliver the information, those who are like Antonio and Yvette, you know, like like they are doing their podcast or they broadcast, but they got to get out there. The way Dr. King was effective and so forth. If you take an example, leadership. He was able. He was invited to universities here, universities there, and so forth. You know, it, you, if, if you're not able to get out there, you you can you can do your podcast or your broadcast in in the uh, you know behind in, in your studio or in home and so forth. But well, if you're not able well, to get out there, hold on a second, because there take was actually a specific reason why I asked those questions. Right. Right. The reason why I ask those questions is actually a very simple reason. The okay. reason I ask those questions is because we need to understand exactly where the advocacy is being driven from. Let me explain. Mm -hmm. We had initially Yvette and Antonio educating us about a particular political stance, political point of view, right? Right. Okay. Right. And uh, so with that political point of view, let me turn up my volume just a little bit here. With that particular point of view, is that better, fam? By the way, hit me with the one in the chat if my voice sounds better. But with that particular point of view, what we had is the opportunity to have a lens that frames things in a way that is to our benefit as opposed to our detriment. Right. Okay. So right. Now that we have this this lens, this frame, people are organizing around right. this new frame, this new lens, right? Okay, so right. with that having been said, right, the work then now is where it belongs. We no longer require per se. This is not to say that we need to disrespect them or hit on them or whatever the case may be. But I don't believe that we need now Yvette and Tone to really do anything. What we have seen is the birth 
of a group of people, a cabal, a vanguard, if you will, from this transformational understanding that was brought to us through the attribution of this hashtag and the education that's went around it. And kudos to them for that, right? But right. my question now to the people is, is that, do you have enough now to be able to go right. and do the need for yourselves, right? We talked about yeah. leadership on sure. one of my broadcasts where I did, a, I, I provided you all a quote from the Book of the Way and its Virtue. And I reminded us that it's an ancient dictum that the best leaders are those that when the work is done, the people stand up and acclaim to themselves, we did it all by ourselves, right? In other words, the best leaders are the ones that at the end of the day, won't really be that concerned much about the credit, just that the work gets done, right? So yeah, that's true. I, I, I wanted to ask you those questions, Elder, because you're right. There's been a lot of conflict around personalities and different, you know, conflicting little things or this, that, and the third, right? But there is nothing whatsoever right. that is stopping us from doing the work. Right. Nothing. Yeah. 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 I was I was watching the commencement. I was watching. Uh, well, I, I listened to the valedictorian down at uh, down at uh, Mo House college and so forth you, you you got a lot of energy and a lot of consciousness that's going on down there that 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 you got a, a lot of young you got a lot of a lot of ados and these hbcus that's ready to that's really ready to, to to do the work you know so you know it's just we you know ados wherever the, wherever you are it's just like fred like during the Black Panther Party, you had Fred Hampton, who was in Chicago. He was very, you know, he was very, uh, you know, a student po politics and everything. He was one of the strongest, you know. He was one of the, he was one of the powerful, you know, uh, mm -hmm. leaders, leaders in, in that party, you know. So it's wherever you are, you know, it's wherever you are, you know, and you're building these chapters and so forth. Because we don't have a centralized ADOS, we don't have a centralized uh, 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 place right now. So it's going to be, you know, like during the civil rights movement, uh, so they call it civil rights, human rights movement, and so forth. You had people, the grassroots, like Malcolm X would talk about, the grassroots were were the one that was was really stirring up things, you know, that was really taking taking uh, taking their place out and taking their place in the struggle and so forth. So but no, it's nothing no, preventing. I'm, 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 I'm going to say this because I think it warrants saying, right? At the end of the day, we are fortunate at this particular point to have this opportunity for someone to lead that is uncorruptible, unviable, cannot be killed, cannot be violated. And that is the right. lineage, right? So right. I, that's the one weapon that we, one frame that we never really had, right? And so now right. that we have that, I think that it should be right. easier now for us to yes, it is. step back away from personalities. I mean, all of these names that you name off are great historical figures that have been right at the forefront of where our struggle was, you know, back in the day during the civil rights movement and things like that, right? But there are new names right. that will rise and new names that will fall. The way I see it right. is that as an advocate for my people, my job is to basically try to work myself out of a job, right? Mm -hmm. My, my right. job is to kind of put myself in a position where I can be like, well, I can talk about video games or something like that because the angry black sheep, we no joke. They, they got this. Right. They, they running roughshod. They they giving everybody right. this work and they getting it done. And I'm right. getting it done with them. I just want to be a member of the right. herd. So, brother, right. I'm, I'm going to go ahead and let you go because I want to address a couple of more things before I take the next call. And I have one right. call come in. Mm -hmm. But I really appreciate, as always, your, um, your input, yeah. your feedback. And I thank you, as always, yeah. for you taking the time to share, you know, share your jewels with us today.
Okay, my brother. Peace. And as uh, as as uh, James Baldwin said in one of his famous es essays, uh, the fire next time. You That's know? right. So the it'll, fire be, next it'll be time, brother. I appreciate you. Peace. Let me uh, address a couple of things I saw in the chat here. I won't take a, a new call right away because there's a couple of things that I want to saw uh, that I want to address. Real talk said, on one hand, you're saying Yvette and Tone need to be here. On the other hand, we don't need them. Make up your minds. Okay, so let me make it easy for you. I don't get to tell you that something is so pivotal that I need all of us to round up our political capital to make it happen and not be at least the face in front. Right? If I don't have my ass out there, how important is it? I'm just saying, like if I say to you real, look, we need to... We need to go and we got to go pick up this TV. It's important that we have this TV, right? The game's going to come on this weekend. This TV, we got to have it, right? So then you head to the store and you you got your money with you, right? And you waiting on me to show up. And I'm not there at the store to pick up the TV. Well, how important really was it that we pick up the TV? Right? If I wasn't even, you know, here I am banging on you for a week. Then we got to go get this TV, fam. We got to go get it. We got to go get it. I mean, we can't. There's no way we can watch this game. We don't have this good ass TV. And then day shows up Saturday and I say, OK, boom, let's go get the TV. And I'm not there. How important are you going to think it was that we needed to get the TV in the first place? Right. It was me that was advocating for it. It was me that was banging on that drum that was pushing that. You feel me? Right. But then when it came time to go get it. I don't show up. That's all I'm saying, fam. You don't you, you don't get to just do that. You see what I'm saying? Like that to me does not make sense. You don't get to bang on us that we need to advocate for this, that, and the third. But then when it comes time for that advocacy, we don't see you. That don't make sense. Oh, of course, your man Mark Black. What's your name? Where you calling from? And what's on your mind? Oh man, it's Ray Ray, Hood Ray, Heroes Ray. TV. Peace, How you brother, doing, my peace. brother? Welcome to the broadcast, fam. What's on your mind? Oh man, everything's wonderful, man. Hey, you do a great job. I really appreciate you. Ooh, I wonder um, sometimes, fam, but I thank you for that, man. <laughs> what, what, uh, you know, the floor is yours. Talk to us. Well, yeah, um, I agree with you um, on the point as far as um, us taking a look at at people and really. Um, digging deep instead of just dealing with surface level. But what I take issue with, with Jason Black is he was personal and he was kind of emotional. Like it was, like it was personal to him. I think we can, if we learn how to critique without being personal and coming from an egoic place, cause we talk about, you mentioned, you know, Tone's ego, I believe. But I say everybody's operating from a place of ego, including Jason Black. He wants credit. And that's OK. But I think he, we got to be honest that both Tone and Tone might have showed some ego with some things he said as far as he, how he addresses Byron as, his, as big bro, as the homie. Yeah, Tone does have to work on that. I agree. But um, I just feel like that's irrelevant compared to the justice claim. You know, that's like small. So to focus on that, you know, and, and it's, it's some good points that need to be made and need to be looked at. I understand that. But I just feel like um, timing-wise, and everybody's on their own time, so I really can't judge his time, but I don't know. I think we got to work on ego. You know, fam, here's the thing. I, I couldn't agree with you more. I think there was a personal element to what he did, right? And again, I'm not going to address whether I agree with his broadcast or disagree with it. I think that like many things, it warrants discussion, actual real discussion. So here's what I would like for us to consider from this whole shebang, right? This whole thing. And that is this. At the end of the day, what's more important, right? 
Like, I can tell you for a certainty, fam, that if anybody comes at me, right, comes at me, and I felt that the way they were coming at me warranted a response, first of all, because look, I'm going to be honest with you. Not everything that everybody says is worth getting all up and, you know, getting all head up for, right? It don't, like, right. here's the thing. Um, I got a, a pretty unique background, right? I grew up this big, fat, nerdy kid in the hood. You can imagine <laughs> that shit wasn't easy for me, fam. You feel me? Right, 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 right. But here's Most something to, to, to note. If I was going to make it in my neighborhood, there were two things that I needed to do. Number one is I needed a really thick skin. Meaning unless I was willing to fight all comers every day, no matter what, I had to pick my battles, right? I had to say, you know what? Some of these things people just going to say, and I can feel how I feel about it, but it just don't step up to the level of, you know, throwing fisty cups or having words or whatever, right? So I had to develop a really thick skin. And second of all, I had to develop a really solid sense of what fights needed to be fought, right? In other words, I had to develop some boundaries around certain things. I had to say that, okay, people can call me a fat ass, they can call me a geek, nerd, etc. whatever. They can say this about me, say this, that, dirt about me. I ain't gonna sweat it. But if they say something right. about my mama or they put hands on me, then it's fisticuffs, right? So I had to lay mm -hmm. out clear boundaries of what I was willing to kind of let pass and what what I was never going to let pass. You dig? I did. You feel me? So here's, I see. here's where it's at for me. Antonio Moore is an educated man who's graduated law school and can defend himself. I right. realized that what Jason Black had to say about Antonio was offensive to some people, right? But I'm of the mind that if it was really, truly so slanderous, so beyond the pale, and so worthy of a response, Tone can handle that. You don't necessarily need y'all yeah. to do that for him, right? I didn't That's sign true. up to def I didn't sign up to defend Antonio Moore. Not any more, I should say, than I would any other person of my lineage, right? In other words, if people got words, let them have words. I don't really much care that that dude said something about Tone. I really don't. I don't care necessarily that Tone said something, you know, to Tariq and misunderstood some things or whatever. That's between them. They grown ass adults. Meanwhile, right. all of the partisans are out here banging and, and just splashing you know, collateral damage all over the place for what? Tone is grown. If it's really all that bad, what what um what Jason Black said, so much so that it warrants a response, it doesn't warrant a response from his partisans. It warrants a response from Antonio. And I would think that if it rises to the level of a response, what we should see rather than more damn drama and more personal attacks and more bullshit is some rebuttals. Mm -hmm. I think that we should just see some rebuttals. If we're not going to see that, and we're just going to see more, you know, personality-driven crap, I, I really don't want it, fam. This, this is real talk. I, I really don't care. Like, right, right, right. You know, but I'm saying, like, um... This, right? um Easy be easy said the ego criticism came from a guy who brags about his own accomplish accomplishments. I couldn't agree more. Jason Black will, will tell you in a minute what he's done, right? Now, I right. would argue that he's still not wrong. See, here's the problem. Here's the problem in a nutshell. Partisans can't take the information that's right and do anything with it because of the feeling that they have about the information that's wrong. You feel me? Right. right? Like, mm -hmm. if, if I got an enemy, which, you know, at this point is basically white America. If a white American, one of my fellow white citizens came into chat right now and dropped something that I felt was worthy of a response, whether it was negative or positive, the very first thing that I would do is I would analyze what it was that they were saying to determine whether or not it's even worthy of a response. 
But if it were worthy of a response, I wouldn't care how personal this fool was with me. We'd have a debate right. or a discussion about the information. And if what hey. that person said, that fellow white citizen of mine, said something that was actually true about me, right? I would simply just acknowledge, you know what? You may be a racist bastard, but you spot on with that. Hey, you, you, absolutely, you, you, I needed that. you, you I absolutely, you, you absolutely, you absolutely, you absolutely right. Cause I do that online when I'm banging anyway, if somebody trying to come at me and I'm dealing with data and they want to go left and try to, uh, pull that emotion or go personal, that's proof that they don't have anything. And that's easy to come back. So I get it. But my point is. From a maturity standpoint, when you know that there are partisans, it, why not? Why can't brothers address brothers respectfully? I would agree. I, I don't couldn't know. agree more. I could not agree more. As a matter of fact, I've made it a point that whenever I have a disagreement with somebody in the chat, because people will pop in the chat and say, damn you, I don't agree with you, blah, 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 blah. I offer them an opportunity to call in and voice their disagreement. I give them a full hearing, right? In other words, I don't sit there and um and and discount their positions or whatever the case may be, right? I let them get out their full position and then I address their position. I never attack them personally. I let them know that what right. I'm looking for is a meeting of the minds. When we get off the line, right? If that person and I were in disagreement, we need to be at a place of agreement. In other words, either his idea or her ideas are correct, and I need to adopt their ideas where they're at, or they need to identify and adopt mine. You feel me? Mm -hmm. That's But mm -hmm. again, that comes from, I cannot stress this enough. This comes from the idea that I don't really give a shit about personality. I don't care about who I like and who I don't like. Right. I got people that right. are in my chat that I love, that are my favorite people, that are my best angry black sheep that I adore. But if they off point with something, I got no problem with respectfully pointing out that they're off point. And I love them. Respectfully. Right. Respectfully. So I will come respectfully. to them and be like, whoa, 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 you out of pocket here, fam. This is why you're out of pocket and explain to what's going you know, what's going on with the situation. If I'll do that with people that I care for, then everybody else. You know what I'm saying? Nobody is above reproach. That's my I opinion. agree. We we would do better, fam, in this in this advocacy, in this space, if we developed a hell of a lot thicker skins. Because if you think some of the shit that Jason Black had to say to Tone was bad or or say about Tone was bad, if we start yeah. gaining any traction, people are not going to be talking to Tone. They will be looking to do things to Tone. Do you understand where I'm coming from, fam? Like You right. Like, you right, bro. You listen, right. Listen, listen, fam, we got to be on some real shit for a change, please. Right? If you yeah. think that talking about <laughs> If you talk, if you think that talking about somebody is something that warrants a nuclear response, then when people start really coming at us, I'm not certain how some of the people are going to handle that. Yeah. Right? I, I'm just I'm just not certain how that's going to be handled with some of these personalities and their egos that are involved in this shit. And that's a real value, right. sir. Yeah. 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 But one thing I, one thing, I mean, one thing I could say, one thing I could say though, too, I, I, I totally agree with you that, um, the lineage is the true leader of this movement and it's a beautiful thing to see these see the thing about it is i think there's a little jealousy involved with the fact that um other folks might have been jason black might have been doing it longer and to see these chapters develop i think ego wise that that might be a, affecting some people as well you know i think that we all need to hold all of these personalities. Right? I agree. Straight up. Like, but this is the work. Okay, let me let me phrase this properly. 
This is part of the work that we, the people, need to do. Because there was something that to re, uh, that uh, that uh, Jason Black said during his broadcast that is absolutely true, right? And I'm certain it got thrown out along with a lot of other shit for most folk. And that was this, is that we need to be able to count on the people to do their due diligence, to ask, like, it's easy to point the finger at Jason Black and be like, that rude bastard said this, that, and the third, and so on and so forth, right? Right. But was there any questions that he asked that we couldn't? See, so he put himself out there sort of as a lightning rod, right? Because now we can critique right, right. him. Now we can say that, you know, Jason Black said this, Jason Black said that, so on and so forth, right? But right, the fact right. is, is that these questions are valid to every personality that you all interact with, that we all interact with, except we're not doing the, the questions. We're not the ones that are okay. asking these damned questions. And that, I'm going to give you a little right pushback. There, fam, is the crux I'm gonna give you a of little, the matter. I'm, I'm going to give you a little pushback on that. Go ahead, I, I, don't think it's ne I, I don't think it's necessary to know if Tone is a practicing attorney. Like, th I don't think that is necessarily important if he's a practicing attorney or not. Like, why does he have to say, yeah, I, um, I'm Antonio Moore. I directed crack coming out the cracks, the Rick Ross story or whatever. And um, I studied law, but I never practiced, though. I never practiced. I just want to let y'all know that I studied law, but I never I'm not practicing. He doesn't have to say that. I personally if the man don't never... think he needed to give his resume at all, right? But Me now, too, here's right. The thing. Here's the thing, fam. It was not Jason Black who told Antonio to give his resume. Antonio does that. So now, it, he, okay, so here's the thing, fam. It's like, it's like we all, we all black folk. We know how we operate. If you don't want your business to be out there, don't put your business out in the street, right? We say that all the time. We're... We say, that's hey, right. Don't put your business out there because once you put your business out there, it's fair game. Everybody can do whatever, ask whatever, say whatever, right? Okay. So right. if there's something about me that I don't per se want everybody to know, the last thing I'm going to do is get up on YouTube and put that out there for everybody to hear, right? If right. I don't want it to be open for question, I won't make it something that's open for question, right? Now, right. here's the thing. Future 5001 said your resume gives you credibility in this world. So let me ask you this, Future, and, and you can address this too, brother. All right. If the truth isn't enough credibility for people, then why is showing a lamb skin or a, a title after your name or letters after your name or whatever, why is that so much more better? Or why is that better? Right. Like if, if the truth isn't enough for people, right? If, if I present information and a good analysis that allows you to be able to go ahead and do the research at this, that, and the third, see a lot, again, fam, the crazy part is, is that, is that all of these questions, fam, fam, I, again, I'm not really, I feel you. If Tone showed his paperwork, that's great. I'm not saying I saw it, so I can't speak on something that I ain't see, right? I'm not saying he didn't. I feel you. What I'm saying is, though, is simply this, right? It all comes back ultimately to the people, right? The I people. agree. It comes back to us. We got to look, fam. We got to start getting honest. That's why I said we need a time to regroup. We need a time for introspection and to really get back on board with what Ted, I, I'm blocked from Tone's Twitter. I, I, I need to keep but I'm I, Tone's blocked. I can't see <laughs> But 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 we're we're not we're not off point. Like on the ground, people are making moves locally. So we just watching this and like, okay, it's interesting to see how these folks are going at each other ego wise. But people are making moves on the ground. So, yeah, we should. This is a teachable moment, and there should be introspection, you know? Yeah. But, um. That's what I take from it. Yeah, yeah. This, this is a but at the end moment. of the day, people, because, I, you know, a, a good point was made by the brother 
on the ground, and you you said it too. Why weren't they at the HR forty? Why weren't they? You know, you make valid points. You you make valid points on that, but the people are on the ground, and they're the true leadership of this movement. You know? Yeah. I mean, again, I have so much optimism based off of seeing the growth of the various chapters that I, I cannot overstate it enough, right? At the end of the day, I think that many of us claim the name to coin a phrase because this call for justice for our ancestors as well as for ourselves have driven us to this point of advocacy in this transformational moment and so on and so forth, right? So I think that right. at the end of the day, at the end of the day, the work has to take precedence. I don't want yes. to continue to see this partisanship over particular person, not even for me. Fam, nobody needs to defend me. If there are people who think that I'm uh, fomenting conflict, creating confusion, starting drama, keeping beef going, let them chop. I, I really, I, I don't even, to me, it's not even worth addressing, fam. I know what I'm doing. And if you've been following me and my work, you know what I'm doing, right? So I don't need right. y'all to defend me. Let let them attack. Let, let them bite. So, so how do you, how do you suggest we make folks see and understand that they should watch this and not be partisan and understand that pe these people are human, number one. And people are allowed to give their opinion because you're right, there is a certain level of elitism, you know, as far as, you know, every, no one is beyond reproach and everyone should be critiqued. Yeah, I... Uh, again, people are saying to me that Tone is a member of the bar and stuff like that. That's fantastic. And I'll be honest, if I cared, because I, I've said it already, I don't care. I didn't ever care about Tone's credentials. So y'all pointing that information at the wrong cat. If I cared, I know how to go and look up to see whether or not Antonio's got solid credentials. My point is, fam, is that if you care, if that is something of concern to you, the question should be able to be asked and answered with the same grace that you would answer any other question. That's all I'm saying. That is all yeah. that I'm saying. You can't be sitting here thinking that you got to that you got to defend the pet personalities because if they are in this to win this, they should be able to stand on their own and defend themselves. I don't need anybody to defend me, especially if somebody's just attacking, you know, what they think I'm so on, you know, saying or so on and so forth. And this, that, and the third, I can address that if I decide I feel like I want to address it. You know, some of us and need you, to learn how to pick our battles or some shit. Just keep it in a box. That's right. Not everything. That's right. But you know what? You know, the sad part about this, we got a, we got a whole nother week of this to go because... You know Yvette going to speak on it Monday. Jason Black going to come back again. So, man, people are just on the ground. We need to just do the work. I'm down here in Atlanta. Tamara, Tamara Sheely, we're going to push her. She yes. seems like she about that life. She a real sister. Bam, I'm going to um, talk to her because I want to try to I want to try to get her on the broadcast and get an interview with her. You know, I, I did that interview with uh, uh, with the sister down in Florida. The one who was running it. In, uh, in, yeah, you uh, did. Florida. You did. You did. Yeah, you did. Yes, uh, indeed. Lisa, uh, and, and, and that was a great interview. So I would like to try to get her on. She could get a chance to talk and uh, and let us know what she's doing, why she's doing it, so on and so forth. Right. Um, yeah. I, I want to thank you because you said in a nutshell what I've been trying to say is that at the end of the day, fam, y'all are the ones who are doing the work. This drama, all of this mess will end when you're ready for it too. That's right. That's 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 that's, that's right. really it. Fam, I can't stress it enough. And thank you so much, brother, for your input, your feedback, man. I appreciate you as always. Thank you, bro. Of course. Have a fam, good night, man. You. Thanks. Fam, when you're ready to set aside the partisanship, when you're ready to just let these grown ups be grown ups and let them deal with however they're gonna do their thing, right? When you're ready to recommit 
to the work, all this stuff is gonna stop, fam. It's gonna, it's gonna come to a, a screeching halt. This is Sister Tam, isn't it? 510? Hey, it's Pretty Moose Lima. How hey, you doing, Brother Mark? Pretty Moose Lima, holler at your brother, sister. Welcome to the broadcast. The floor is yours. Okay, so <clears throat> I think I saw maybe the first 15 minutes of uh, the Black Authorities broadcast because you actually came on, so I left and I came here. But um, for the first 15 minutes, um, I just don't think that he, it was a personal attack per se. I did not take it like that. He was very even toned. He didn't have any type of malice in his voice. He sounded like he always sound on the other broadcast. So I just didn't take it that way. And I would like to say um, just shout out to everybody in the chat because we regrouped two weeks ago. Yep. So, did. yeah, you know, I don't know. Again, I'm doing this broadcast, sister, for those who missed that one. Because after the whole Tariq, Nasheed, and Tone, and Yvette thing, we was like, damn, all that. We back to the work. Like, we done had our fun. It was cool, whatever. All right, it's back to the, it's back to the data. It's back to the analysis. It's back to the work. I just think that we need to really get honest with ourselves and listen to other voices besides Tone and Yvette because I don't get me wrong like I, I still try to listen to them but if I'm listening to them and I hear any type of tone or sarcastic or you know like they they get a lot a lot of shit off like subliminally I would say and so could, as could, soon as you know, I hear I mean, people it people are talking about Jason Black and, you know, and how he was, you know, uh, attacking Tone with various ad hominems and this, that, and the third. And I, I see where that interpretation comes, comes from. But see, here's the thing. As I've been saying, that same energy, though, is never directed at Yvette and Tone when they throw shade, when they do ad hominems and don't bring the evidence and so on and so forth. Like, uh, Jason Black can do a broadcast and say something against uh, Tone Yvette and it's all hands on deck you know what I'm saying put the fire out let's go ham right but then Yvette and Tone Abraham is say, saying be specific about, please call it says any damn thing Mark Black uh, Abraham Tanner said be specific please call it Abraham I see you on Facebook right I think we're friends on Facebook so I just want to say that if you've been engaged, if you've been on Twitter, if you've been watching these videos, you know what I'm talking about. I don't need to be specific, okay? I'm just saying, like, it's a lot of bull that's been going on for the whole month of November, the whole month. And it's so crazy to me. You know, every time I call, I always bring up the fact that we just read the book, Where Do We Go From Here? Chaos in Community. I'm saying it all the time because it seems like either we didn't read the book or we read it and we really didn't have comprehension. And I'm not saying this to, to put my brothers and sisters down. I just understand not only the numbers and the data that they are bringing us, also what we have all lived. Our inner city schools are perpetually undereducating our people. I was fortunate enough to be in that number that got bust out, okay? So I'm a little different. I understand that I've been afforded a total different education. I've been groomed to critically think from elementary all the way up through high school. So I don't have a problem with comprehension, but our brothers and sisters that maybe did go to the inner city and let's say their parents weren't educators, because even if you do go to the inner city, but if your parent is big on, you know, giving you supplement material and they're able to teach you that, then you fare a whole lot like you end up being you surpass the people in your school. You skip grades and stuff like that. But that's not the majority of us. And I always like to keep in mind and tell other people that teaching is a skill. And all of us just don't have that. Yes, I have kids of my own. However, I just know what I know. I'm not really able to break it down into pieces, into teachable pieces. Mm -hmm. Like, it's really a thing. So I just want to say that it's crazy 
that we're supposed to be doing a community thing, but it's still chaotic. I peep into social media every now and then just to see if people have calmed down yet. Like, how is it looking? As soon as I go, it's a, it's a constant attack. I love the information that they bring, but I do think that the delivery is horrible. I do think that it's very antagonistic. I do feel that it's very counterproductive, and I didn't just start saying this this month. I said it inside of the sanctuary at the conference. To the people that I met that I'm friends with today, I just want to say this. It's like at some point, you have to listen to other people and get gathered information. Like, you don't just want to be stuck listening, even just listening to Mark Black and telling me that. It's not enough. It's not enough. So once you listen to somebody like T. West, who has a platform, his channel is called Ask Synergy, okay? Or if you listen to Dr. Tracy McCarthy, she breaks things down in teachable moments. She's like, like a professor moment. She has a little PowerPoint, mm -hmm. and she speaks over that. Now, once you li listen to people like that, and you really comprehend what they're saying, you will not still look at Tony and Yvette the same. That's all I'm saying. Yes, we got the information. They gave us the data. Brother Mark, uh, Brother Mark preaches this all the time that we have, they were the parents. Now we're, you know, we've grown. We've evolved. So now it's time for us to find a more constructive way. Yvette doesn't even know what being on cold means. She did a whole three hour diatribe about Tariq talking about being on cold, that he's making the cold up. I find it to be very intellectually lazy. We told her about Neely Fuller Jr. months ago, months ago, okay? So if you don't know, inform yourself so that you can attack on that front. You don't get to throw all these things out that don't make sense. So I'm, I don't know what to do because I really plan on bringing my entire family to the next conference. I don't know what to do. I'm in limbo because I feel like maybe they need time to, you know, cool off, calm down so they can, like, really get back refocused because I just don't think that is there. And I thank you for letting me vent, Brother no, <laughs> Black, because, you know, I really, I really don't story. have time where I get to talk to my ADOS family on yeah, a one-on-one. -on -one. I don't because like, a lot of people it. are – we need that that place of introspection. We, you know, Mister, I'm gonna address something real quick when you get off the line, and I thank you so much for your call. I really do appreciate you. Thank you, yes, thank you. But I just want everybody remind everybody that you know you have to put the emotions to the side and listen to what people are really saying. And if you put your emotions to the side and understand that Tony and Yvette are not perfect, they are flawed just like the rest of us. If and I tell people all the time, I have a brain that I use daily. So if somebody is telling me something that doesn't quite make sense, I cannot ride with that. And you should do the same. You should analyze everything. I don't care what's going on. Just like you was able to grow up and analyze the things that your parents told you that might not have been so kosher, you need to continue to do that with everybody you encounter, not Agreed. just your parents that you're getting away from. Agreed. Thank you so much, sister. Well, I thank you, everybody. You. Have a good night. You too, sister. Peace, Peace to you. Fam. You know, here's something that I would like to address really quickly, if I may, uh, because the sister was just, in my opinion, beautifully eloquent in what she had to say. Fam, we, the people, us, right? Us, the proponents of our lineage, of our heritage, we need to start setting some serious boundaries, okay? Real talk, I'm going to ask you to call in, all right? Because you've been making little comments all throughout the chat. And I've been not addressing them. I ain't been saying anything. But now you sitting here throwing, you know, y'all and y'all's feelings, y'all taking this too personal, whatever. Why don't you give us a call and tell us how we're all off point and you somehow understand something we don't. Otherwise... I'm going to have to give you the heave ho because you, right now you're not adding anything to the conversation. You're just slinging arrows and hoping somebody bite. I'm just that cat. I'm telling you now, this ain't the place for this. People are going to have emotions. They're going to express them and they're going to have this place to express them. And if you don't like that, then maybe this ain't the place for you. So you either call in or refrain from making your little digs at everybody, or I can make sure you don't have the place to make digs at everybody. 
your choice and you don't have much time to make it. Ibrahim, of course you're welcome to call in, fam. Here's what I want to say, though, fam. We need to develop boundaries. There is no relationship, fam, with anybody or anything that is healthy without boundaries. But there are two key points to boundaries. I hope this is this is real. Caller from 857, it's your man Mark Black. What's your name, where you calling from, and what's on your mind? Caller from 857, it's your man Mark Black. What's your name, where you calling from, what's on your mind? Oh, looks like I missed the call. Okay, call back in, call from uh from uh 857, yep. Uh, here's the thing, boundaries are important, fam, but they require two things. One, they need for you to understand and develop the boundaries. And two, you need to communicate. From 317, it's your man, Mark Black. What's your name, where you calling from, and what's on your mind? Hey, hey, how you doing, Mark Black? This is Ibrahim Tanner. I'm sorry, fam. Repeat your name for me. I say this is Ibrahim Tanner. Hey, what's up, Ibrahim? Hey, glad to have you on the broadcast, fam. You know you're always welcome. What's on your mind, fam? Talk to us. Yeah, yeah. My my thing when I was telling, I believe that was pretty uh person that was talking about be specific because like when you critiquing somebody personally, I think it's good to be specific. So if they are doing something, they'll know what to change. Right. Um. Now she was talking about throwing shots. I now this is a long time ago. I watched so many Breaking Brown shows. I really don't know which one, but I do remember one time Yvette was talking. And she said something about people that have call-in shows but don't take phone calls. And I kind of thought that was a dig at Jason Black or Professor Black Truth or whatnot. But I really didn't care because I don't really listen to them. Mm -hmm. I listened to Tyreek before they fell out and before he went against the uh, Comcast Civil Rights Act. But just as entertainment, right? Just yeah. like, like I didn't listen to anything he said. It was a lot of shady stuff. I have a street background. A lot of the stuff he says just don't be adding up, you know, about, you, you know, about I hung with these people, but I didn't do nothing. And then I, I've been to jail and I got my record expunged, but he never says what he did in the jail. Like, like going to jail when you're from a ghetto or urban environment is not a bad thing, right? I've been to jail, I've been to prison, off of dealing cocaine, right? Yeah. I don't run around telling people that every time, but, you know, I've been there. It's not a badge of honor, but I don't see it as a disgrace, right? No, I didn't fam, deal it's, the it's, community it's where life. I had to. I understand. Okay, so 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 my take on the uh, Jason Black or whatever his name is, I listened to the video. Um... I wasn't defending tone per se. I was defending truth, right? A lot of the stuff he said about the ADOS movement was just lies. In particular, he talked about Tyreek came through in July of 2019. Yvette already addressed that. We had articles wrote about ADOS. But when you point specifically to January 2019, Kamala Harris on the 21st announced her uh, campaign for president. A ADOS came and just pretty much swarmed her like bees on the internet. All of the mainstream media started covering ADOS. That's mm -hmm. when Joy Reid had the show with uh, the Dashiki guy, uh, Mark something. Mark Thompson, but yeah. That's big why brain. you see the big jump in the ADOS thing. Now, Professor Black Truth attributed that specifically to some Tyreek Nashi retweets. That was wrong. That was so. You telling me a Tariq Nasheed retweet is going to do more than what mainstream media is going to do? And these weren't just people who was coming over to ADOS. These were people who was curious about who is this ADOS movement that's all online hitting Kamala Harris tweets with these facts, right? Yeah. Um. What else did he say? He said. Now hold on a second, fam. Because another thing, mm -hmm. another thing we have to look at, right? So there was the charts because. I saw the, like I said, I saw the whole entire video and he showed the rise or whatever. I don't know who's calling from 301, but I'll take your call after this one with Brother Ibrahim. But he he showed the uptick 
in subscribers and things like that or whatever the case may be and attributed to Tariq, right? Okay, mm -hmm. I get that. I think ultimately that data was unhelpful, in my opinion. That that I'm I'm only analyzing the argument on its face. And the reason why I think it was unhelpful is because I don't think that he was right, nor necessarily you're right. I think that that was naked information that without context can't be extrapolated to anything. What we yeah, do it's like a correlation. That, hold on, fam. What we do know is that based off of that information, we saw a rise in the number of subscribers and the number of views on Antonio's work. That's the only thing mm -hmm. that I feel comfortably extrapolating from that information. Now, we can make correlations, right? Because he didn't just... Yeah, he came yeah. out and made an assertion but I don't think he had enough evidence to support that assertion. But I don't think that people that are saying that, oh, it was so blase, skippity, woo, woo, because of tone this, I don't think they can make that assertion either. What we see is the data that suggests that starting in January, there was a rise in his subscriber numbers. And now we can correlate what we like to that. And we can make those arguments, right? And the reason why I'm, I'm being so, what, it might seem like I'm being pedantic, fam, and I hope that you're not taking it down. What I'm saying mm -hmm. is, is that as somebody who tries his best to ground himself in the data, right, the thing is, is I don't want to extrapolate more from the data than is warranted from the information itself. And all we can extrapolate from that chart that he showed was that there was an uptick in Tone's viewership and his uh, subscriber count. Right. We can't really extrapolate anything else. We can conjecture. We can try to draw a correlation, but those are on relatively shaky ground. You feel me? That's all I wanted to say, fam. Mm -hmm. I hope you understand where I'm coming from. With this. Okay. And 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 then he had a critique about tone uh, being unsuccessful and things of that nature, and uh, having a law degree, maybe being a public defender or something like that. Tone has talked about the Stilo case, right? If you watch Freeway Crack in the City, you will understand that he was also representing Freeway Rick Ross versus the rapper Rick Ross, right? And, right. and, and the only reason they lost that case was because the statute of limitations, right? Uh, Freeway Rick Ross didn't get out of prison. So when they eventually got to uh, some type of hearing, it was a statute of limitations. Yeah. Um, um, but... But he he also says in his broadcast, like, sometimes he can't be in places where he needs to be because, like, he's a practicing attorney, right? And he also put that on Twitter, right? But but just to be – and I'm not sure where he's from, if it's, like, Compton or – but but to be a black man from the ghetto with two parents that had you at 16, right, and to make it to UCLA and then – Loyola and have a law degree is successful, right? The data shows we don't have no wealth, right? So, so like, how do you say this person is unsuccessful? And then you compare him to T.I., right? Uh, uh, like, a rapper, right? And then he goes on to say, like, anybody can get a law degree, right? Mm -hmm. I have a bachelor's degree, right? It's a liberal arts degree. I was also in the engineering program at one point in time, right? Anybody just can't get a degree, right? It's not as hard as you think, but the time and the dedication and the study and the, you know, anybody just can't get a degree, right? You're right. So, I'm a trained so, paralegal, and I know for a fact that getting a law degree, it's not difficult because you have to develop some some basic discipline and stuff like that to do research and things like that. But it, it's not as easy as you might think, but it's also not like outrageously difficult or whatever the case may be. You know, Ibrahim, if I might make a point, fam. Here's what I would like for you, you know, for us to consider, right? Is it possible for us to just take Jason Black's critique, whatever it was, okay, and just take from it what we're able to take from it, regardless of our own personal feelings, animus, or whatever the case the may be, that's the thing. I the think he yards. missed. And, and take the what proper like. critique, so, though. I'm sorry, At ahead, one point in time, Otis had gave Go a on. proper critique. Uh, 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 all right, my bad. I, no, I, I can't hear you, fam. So I want, I want you to speak. You go. This you. This you. I think, I think he missed a chance to really give some proper critique, and he spent too much time being petty and condescending. There was a show with Yvette. Hold on, hold on. 
Just stop. Stop. Put it up. Oh, I'm sorry, man. I'm no, you good, fam. Hey, my boy. Um, go ahead. You got to dress some kiddos, fam. <laughs> they need daddy right now. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Hey, fam, look. Um, <laughs> them babies is vastly but, more important um, than us. <laughs> They are, man. They, they, they've been doing it. <laughs> but, but the the point I'm trying to make is that that like he missed the chance to give some critique. Tone has some brash delivery that time. He dismissive at times. Like, like if he was critiquing those issues, I wouldn't have said anything. Right? But wait, you bring him because but, I, I who have been an Adar supporter. Since before it was even a hashtag, right? So just as some background, I've been following Yvette since she was with Boyce. And I, I started following her back in like 2015 or so, right? Mm -hmm. I started following Tone shortly thereafter. I, re I literally have been on this ride roughly since the beginning. I remember when Yvette used to broadcast with Irony. Shout out to Irony, by the way. Love that brother, right? So if, but if I can say those things and get blocked, what hope in hell do we have of people actually getting any type of, like, how can we trust that in the crunch that Antonio is going to give us answers? You see what I'm saying? Like, the whole thing of it is, is that I don't think it's fair, fam, that this man puts himself out there, right, as somebody who's at the forefront, the founder of the hashtag, the whole this, that, and the third, okay? You dig? Right? But then, if anybody stands up and says anything that isn't just flat out applause, right? And so on and so forth, you dig, that they end up getting blocked. Like, that doesn't make any sense to me, fam. Now, I'll admit, I was a little shady. I, I took umbrage. I, I'm going to tell you why I got blocked, Ibrahim. Now, you tell me if what I did warranted the blocking in your opinion. Uh -huh. There was a tweet that Antonio put out where he was basically like, yeah, I just got off the phone with B, talking about Byron Allen, you know, and we chopping it up about, you know, some things. And, you know, it was basically like this, bro, man, we, you know, we Dooney's tweet, like, they was BFFs, right? Now, I yeah, already yeah. have my, my own personal issue, which on my channel, I made clear about the, the sort of interaction between Byron Allen and Antonio and the stand the third, right? I've had some questions about that for a bit. But at the same token, I was, you know, kind of reserved. And I'm like, okay, maybe Tone is going to come out and kind of like, you know, just let it be, you know, let, let it hang out or whatever the case may be and so on and so forth, right? But when he dropped that tweet, it just, it got me. I'm not going to lie. I'm human mm -hmm. like anybody else. It got me. Right? So what I did was I posted this exact tweet. I said in quotations, right? Like I was imitating a conversation. I said, but what about your civil rights? Oh, hold on a second. Yo, what up, B? That was my tweet. That was the tweet that got me blocked. I'm not throwing no stones and hiding my hands. It was, it was a little petty, right? I admit, I was uh -huh. petty. Do you think that that tweet warranted a blocking? I who have been no 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 I, I, and, and so the so yard. so my thing is before I block them and this is me personally so I can't mm -hmm. speak for Tom I generally look at a person's like history of tweets and and see like is this a teachable moment is is this some legit criticism you know or is this person just a troll right, right. obviously if they just a troll I just block and that's something that Tone is quick to do. I don't know if y'all remember this, but Hodis had a critique of Tone once on uh, He's That Show, and he said he called in and he said something, and Tone just went off on him. And he was like, that's all right. I just know that nigga needs a hug. Right? I don't think, and I'm sure nobody thinks, Yvette or Tone are perfect people, but they do the work. Their work is thorough, and, and you had made a comment earlier about saying, like, like or somebody did. I'm, I was putting together a monthly, mm -hmm. but about, like, we may not need them anymore to the local chapters do the work. Now, me and there's a lady named Tiffany, we pretty much co-chair Haydoff Indianapolis, right? Right on. Shout out and, to Haydoff Indianapolis, by the way. Good, good job, fam. So, 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 
So we do a lot of work. We do a lot of work, but but it's still under the leadership of Tony and Zach. We haven't got to the point. We haven't got to the point where we're like moving on our own, on our own guidance. Now, when it comes to all things Indianapolis, right? Yeah. That's pretty much me, like at the forefront, moving forward. But as as a national movement, like when we all come together. We are still up under the guidance of Tone and Yvette, right? Even and you, I don't think we need Tone and Yvette actually, to step I away. I think we need them. 10 more Tones and 10 more Yvette. No, no, no. Yeah. I don't know. I don't think that at all. And I'll explain to you why I don't think that. Here's the thing to know. Okay? The chapters mm-hmm. have the basis of what ultimately will constitute a national push, Right. And, and, and that, to me, is what gives me great optimism about the future of y'all's political advocacy, right? Here's the thing that bothers me, is that y'all say that you're under the leadership of Yvette and Tone, and guess what? It shows, right? Because also under that same leadership, what we see is elitism disguised as critique of people's um, educational standing and status, phrases like, you don't know enough to be having this conversation, or go read a book and then come back to talk to me like everybody learns the same thing, the same way, this, that, and the third, right? What we see is is attacks on whoever it is that is that is pissed Yvette or Tone off that particular day or that particular week. Like, my point is, is I have watched a lot of, of what is potential energy for advocacy be wasted on on attacking blue checks, on attacking um you know this, that, and the third, and then on top of it, like stuff that we really could be advocating for, we don't. And then some of the things that we've been told to advocate for, that we were told to uh, spend political capital on, are questionable, right? I mean, the thing is, is that. Damn, like, yes, you follow under their leadership, but you follow under their leadership under the bad stuff too. And that's the part that I'm trying to get to is that at some point, fam, Yandria asked, uh, did I do, uh, didn't I tell us to chew the meat and spit out the bones, forget their personalities, just carry on with the game? Mm-hmm. Yes, mm-hmm. I have told you that, and I continue to stand by that, right? I'm asking now those people who consider themselves to be cleaved to Yvette and Tone to do the same thing, right? To, to, um, to take what they hear from some of these other people, even if they don't agree 100% with it, and see where there's a basis or a place to stand of common ground and have discussions rather than attacks, right? It's okay for us to address issues with immigration and how it affects our people specifically without attacking immigrants because we can say what we like. But the fact is, is that ADOS people, or at least people who have used the ADOS hashtag, whatever you want to say, right? You can be charitable and say these were outliers or whatever the case may be, but there have been ADOS people who have attacked immigrants, actual people. I don't truck with that. I don't have a problem, <coughs> excuse me, with actual immigrants. I have a problem with illegal immigrants. They should be arrested and deported, right? But I won't attack people. I'm attacking the policy of immigration, right? You see what I'm saying? So my thing is, is yes, if you're going to be led by them, be led. That's, that's perfectly fine. But make sure that you still use your thinking computer that you use your your mind to do your due diligence you feel me right not everything they say is going to be spot on correct some of the things that they espouse that we do is it's not going to be 100 it's not going to be right they, you know they may waste some of our political capital and other things and they need to be able to be addressed when that happens they cannot be above reproach otherwise what's happening fam is not leadership it is dictatorship. And I didn't sign on for Yvette and Tone to be dictators. Does that make sense? Mm. Yeah, 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 yeah. That makes that make, that make absolute sense. That's where so, I'm at, So while, while there is a lot of bickering going on on social media, especially Twitter and stuff, right, what we have is these pipelines where the, where the city organizers get together, right? And the work continues to be done, right? Yeah. 
she had to fall out with Tyreek, and on Twitter, it looks like AUS is just going after Tyreek. But Rob from the DMC and everybody got together, and they still had that successful protest outside of the, um, I was about to say the state capitol building, but in D.C. at the Supreme Court building. Right. So, so, so what you see on social media is not what's actually taking place. Because you was correct on uh, a point you made earlier about that. It's the local chapters that's doing the work, right? And we're connected with each other and, and like things keep moving forward. And I'll tell you this. I'm watching um, on social media and other platforms connecting together as local chapters, right? I see like that that uh that work that happened in California, that was uh ADOS, ADOS uh, Sacramento and ADOS SoCal together working with that group that in the chapter, right? So yeah like, again my my hope is that the local chapters continue to do the work that they've been doing because they are where the energy is, where where the real work is happening and where the advocacy is really going on. And I, I shout out to them all day long. Yeah, yeah, yeah. When I hear people say like, oh, I'm tired of them bickering online, like it's so much work we could be doing. I'm like, are y'all not plugged in? Like when I see these tweets, I'm like side eye on because I'm like, like, Work is being done so much. Like, you got people tweeting, but then going out. Yesterday, I talked to the Indianapolis uh, City County Controller, right? And he's the one who signs the checks for people who's actually getting money from the city, right? Mm -hmm. Like, like work is always being done. I think some people um, haven't been emboldened enough to, like, join the chapter or start a chapter or go out and do the work. So their advocacy is just done on social media, right? Mm -hmm. And I think those are the ones that get discouraged when things go left on social media. For us that's in the streets, like, moving and pushing this agenda forward, you know, one by one, it's hard to get caught up with what goes on on social media. I'm going to tell you, fam, um, I'm going to tell you, brother, at the end of the day, I mm -hmm. think the chapters really need to continue their engagement on social media and let people know about the work they're doing. I would love to hear more from the chapters. I would love to hear more about the boots that y'all have on the ground, the things that y'all doing. Like, let's combat the toxicity, right? The partisanship and so on and so forth. Let's combat that with evidence of what, see, I'm from Missouri, right? The show me state. Mm -hmm. You can show me better than you can mm -hmm. tell me, right? And, I and, and, to, and, and Kansas City, got a chapter meeting this weekend. Yes, that's right. See, we don't need to be told what work is being done when we're being showed what work is being done. You feel me? Right? If you want to mm -hmm. shut these personalities up faster than anything, fam, continue to do the work. Because mm -hmm. if we and, continue and, to and do one more thing, that um, interface that everybody sees across social media, eventually it won't matter who likes who, who's beefing with who or whatever. Boom. Done. Nobody's going to care. What if they held a beef and no one showed up? About the about the ADOS candidates running, we do have Tamala Sheely. Somebody was running for city county council person in L.A., but they dropped out. Mark Stevenson from Columbus, Ohio, he had a judge. She was Republican mm -hmm. that is part of ADOS Columbus, and they were able to push her through along with four other candidates. I know she was part of ADOS Columbus, so... So we like 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 this thing is like just now forming as far as locally, right? So we while we don't have a bunch of candidates yelling ADOS, we do have some candidates that we got in, and then much more that's being groomed, right? That's what's so up. so I think if you ask the question of like what ADOS is doing, I think you need to point that towards yourself. And I'm not talking to you. I'm just no, saying for those who are online and calling and saying like what's going on with ADOS. There's a lot going on. We just need more people to get involved. And that's all that I wanted to say. Like, when you critique somebody, and, you know, this is just for all the listeners and me too, like, like just be specific because, like, Tom might watch this show later. Yvette might watch this show. And they might be like, you know what? I do do that. I need to. But when it's just raw, you know, it's like, what is this person talking about? Yeah, and that's well, all I, I wanted to you. say. I mean, you know? Look, sometimes it's not in what you say. It's how you say it. Uh, there's some valid concerns about whether or not Yvette and or Tone will take critique, even in, in respect and so on and so forth. And that is something that they will need to be accountable for, that they will need mm -hmm. to own mm -hmm. up to, because there is a clear, uh, what I consider a clear established tendency 
towards a real lack of engagement and a, a, a willingness to just say, you know what, block, rather than address maybe somebody who's a little bit, uh, you know, uh, saying, hey, what's this? Or I don't quite understand. I mean, look at look at how many ADOS people threw shade at people who just simply were asking inquiries about what is down ballot voting. And then when they took umbrage with the fact that tone at the conference threw out democratic, like you could only vote, because that's really the thing, Ibrahim, if you want to know the truth, fam, this is somebody who's been on the inside, right? If you want to know what set off the bomb, everybody, when you said, when they said, we're going to vote down ballot, right? If everybody was cool with that, I was watching the broadcast and live tweeting um, the, uh, the conference. Everybody was cool with that. And then Tone, right from behind her, steps up and said, Democratic. Mm -hmm. The bomb because that changed everything. If you're talking about just simply down ballot voting, that's something that's explain. But you don't have a seat here and throw shade, fire, and smoke at Democrats for 10 months and then say, oh, but vote Democratic down ballot and think people are just going to eat that up. That's not the case. And the fact that people are getting blocked but just simply expressing a disagreement with what should have been a part of the strat to begin with is an issue. No, it's an issue. Mm -hmm. and that, so, again, fam, I'm with you on that one. I want to continue to see the work being done on all fronts, right, everywhere we can get it in. This battlefield is so broad, but I think that if you're going to put yourself out there as, um, as somebody who... Um, you know, who's trying to be at the forefront or trying to be at the vanguard, there's some key questions that you just gonna have to be able to deal with and answer like that, no matter who asks them. And if you yeah, do that, yeah. that's a problem. And not just from mainstream media, from common folks, like from your ADOS brother and that. Yeah, 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 I understand that. All right, I appreciate it. No man. problem, right. it's always a pleasure, fam. Don't be a stranger. Okay. Peace, brother. Peace, by the way, to Reggie and Mr. Show for joining the broadcast. Uh, Tamora, I see you as well. Um, I'm going to decline this call from 425 because I actually want, uh, there was somebody who was waiting to call in. Here we go, from 857. Okay, caller from 216 is your man, Mark Black. What's your name, where you calling from, and what's on your mind? Okay, y'all can't hear me, fam? No sound? Hold on a second. Let me try to make an adjustment here, see what's going on. Okay, can y'all can hear me now? Okay, good. I'm going to reopen Skype. Sorry about that, fam. That's the trouble when you run everything from one system. I appreciate y'all's patience. And I'm going to work with uh, with Brother Richard here to try to get a different method set up uh, to be able to take calls. So I appreciate y'all's patience. Thank you so much, fam. Uh, CJ, if you want to call in, you said you were calling from 347. Go ahead, fam. I'm going to take your call next. And then I'm going to wrap it up because it's getting kind of late and I know y'all want to go and enjoy y'all Saturday. There we go. All right. Hey, CJ, it's your man, Mark Black, fam. What's on your mind? It's Sherry. How are oh, you this Sherry. evening, hey, Mr. Sister. Black? <laughs> How you doing? <laughs> I, I thought you were going to call in early. <laughs> this has been an excellent broadcast. Thank you so much. Because man. let me just, <laughs> because <laughs> last night I checked in on Twitter and I I was like, what the fuck is going on now? Because I had no idea about this whole thing. I'm like, who are they beefing with this time? And I just, I instantly got off because I was like, I don't have time for this. I'm so tired of all of it. It's just nonsense. It's just yeah. nonsense to me. And we have to move beyond it. And it's just a big old distraction. It's not, this is not what I want to be doing. This should be about the fight for reparations, you know, not mm -hmm. dogging each other out, you know, and I, I hate that thing about the code. I know it's people's thing, whatever, but I just feel like, there has to be some rules that we all need to follow. And one of the things I did put a link in the chat is 
Army went to Chicago when ADS, ADOS Chicago was getting started, and I encourage everyone to watch it. And it's um, he's, it's Army Ose Frinkpong in Chicago, and it's about activism and organizers. And he gave the framework of how we should all be organizing our local chapters. And that's what I want to see happen. We don't have to take over the NAACP. We can form these ADOS organizations and have our own things, but there should be a framework that each chapter follows so that when this shit on Twitter and whatever else, you know, Mm -hmm. on social media happens, that we do not get, get off our square. That we stand on our square and say, whoever, Yvette, Tone, Tariq, Jason Black, whoever is beefing with each other, let them beef with each other. But we need to stay out of it. I agree, Sherry. And my I mean, thing, the thing is, is that, like I said, what if somebody held a beef and nobody showed up, right? Because we we fail, right. we fail to uh, to to understand that beefing takes these days more than two people. You can have two. I won't say idiots because that was my <laughs> that was my first thing. But you can have two people sitting there going back and forth, sniping back and forth with each other, right? But if somebody else jump in, somebody else is gonna jump in on the other side, and so on and so forth. It is us, the people, that keep the, the pot getting stirred to keep you know just to be real with it, sister. Like we let's let, we need to be honest about who and what we are as a people. We are great people, but we have our foibles, our flaws, our issues, and one of those issues is is Schadenfreude. We like beef. We like reveling in the struggle and the suffering and pain of other black folk. And we need to really address that shit because it's a it's a collective problem. It just stretches across um, social economic strata and the whole nine yards, right? At some point, right. we need to decide, sister, that somebody wants to hold a beef, we're not showing up. We just don't want to be a part of it. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> you feel me? Exactly. Right. And I just like this thing with tone. I mean... I always had a problem with him. And the only reason I started subscribing to him was because of Yvette. And I wanted to be fair and see what he has to say because he is dismissive of people. He talks down to people. And that is not, it's not helpful. You know, I've noticed that our people are so immature in terms of politics right now. So, we're not all on the same page. Mm-hmm. So sometimes you're going to have to hold someone's hand to bring them along. You can't just poo-poo on somebody and be like, you're an idiot. Now, let me I'm tell you something, you. Sherry, because I think you brought up a very great point. Everybody at this point, okay, so you have some people who are even a part of ADOS is, that's questioning the need for Antonio and Betty Bet. But here's the thing. If they stayed where they started, there would always be a role for them because where they started was as educators. There was no question they didn't want to explore. Tone used to start broadcast with like three or four questions that he wanted to answer throughout the broadcast. Yvette spent a whole bunch of time educating folk. That's their lane, right? There's going to be other people who actually carry the work out there and put boots on the ground and do other stuff, right? The fact is, is that they right. already have a place. It, it's the, In my opinion, sometimes it's them trying to take on other roles that they may not necessarily be more suited for or whatever the case may be. You feel me? Right. It, it, right. Like, well, if even they, if they were Monday, stick, you know, sticking the, with education, I think they would be just right. fine. Because I feel like every time I check in with a show now with Yvette, we're dragging someone. Even though she says we're not dragging someone, we're dragging someone. And then I'm like, what? what is happening right now? We're going to spend each show putting down someone else that's black? I mean, I'm just like, I'm just like so frustrated with it because this now, I've, to me, I feel like it's just a total mess right now. It's a total mess. You know, we had this whole thing with Bree do some bass and all that stuff. And my thing is, instead of just attacking these people, like when I see these folks, the so-called blue checks, being the agents of chaos, I point out the data to them because I want you to make it make sense. 
you know, it's just like with, uh, what's her name? Yvette Brown. Yeah, NYB. Brown, yeah, She Yvette said Brown something, and I, and she was quiet. She did not respond to me, and she did not block me, because I asked her, make it make sense. Make this make sense. So instead of attacking them, you know, because even somebody on Twitter went so far as to find Brie Newsom's registration from her wedding. And I was like, okay, this is just like some deep state shit, you know, like, why are we doing it? Look, I'm going to be honest (laughs) with you. I I actually went on Brie on that same thread and I posted three tweets at Brie, right? Three. And I, I did not bite my tongue. I, I, I was, you know, I didn't call her a bunch of names and stuff, but I did not bite my tongue. Do you know I still am following her and she still has not blocked me? Same with me. The thing Same is, with is, me. That, is that, and, and here's another thing that messes me up. We thought, or at least this is what I thought, right? I thought that our goal on social media or getting at folk was to get at the folk that have their hands on the levers of power. Like, I have no problem with throwing shade, fire, and smoke at Sheila Jackson Lee all day long, right? Exactly, I can't say it. that hat wearing one from, um, you know who I'm talking about, the Um, one on the CBC? Yes, yes. What's it, Frederica or whatever? I have no problem with getting at the CBC all damn day. I have no problem getting with any of these politicians, any of the presidential candidates, open Open season. My politician. Right? You, I know Ayanna Presley knows who I am because I ride her ass oh like my God. crazy, I, I've jumped, okay? I've jumped on I Ayana. can't stand it. I've jumped on Ilhan Omar. <laughs> AOC should have nightmares about me at this particular point. This exactly. The with the politicians, I have no problem with whatever y'all deliver, whether it's a, a payload of kindness or it's a payload of fire, shade, and smoke. But all these other people don't have their hands on the levers of power. Who the fuck are they? Like, why do we care so much about talking to Bree Newsom Bass or or Yvette Brown or 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 or, or Michael Harriet? Oh, I don't care about what they. Or Talia Kweli. I can't. I'm like, why are y'all fucking arguing with this nut? He's a nut. Leave him alone. My thing is like, pick your fight. Walk away. Man, look, if I look, I'm telling you, you got the data on your side, you got advocacy on your side. Why in the hell what Michael Nance or Big Bird, you know, uh Thompson, what what does any of them have to say? Now, if you have a broadcast where you are breaking down their positions, like when we talked about uh when that information came out about that that meeting. For in Cobra, where they were talking about Kemet and all this other stuff, I think that oh was my God, the libation. right? Because right. that addresses right to the heart of what they're advocating for. I think that's perfect, right? Where is that type of stuff? But here's the thing: when you're sitting there, you and know, it really went nowhere. Did you see that? It went nowhere. Facts. Facts. It went nowhere. Like, are and we going to do this, what... this this propaganda, like, not propaganda, but because I saw propaganda in the chat, right? Are we here to do this political advocacy with politicians? Or are we here to gain, you know, cred, Twitter street cred with blue checks and this, that, and the third? Like, I really don't. You know what? Bree Newsom was somebody who only white liberals and a few misguided folk listen to. She drops one ADOS bomb, and all of a sudden we spend a week giving this woman all sorts of relevance. Make it make sense. Right. Right. That's what I'm saying. Make it make sense to me. Make it make sense, because it does not make any kind of sense. She gets her butter biscuits, everything from white liberals, and so on and so forth. That's her lane. She going to say whatever the hell she wants to say. She drops one ADOS, one. And we spend an entire damn week making her relevant, giving her shine. Now people are like, oh, yeah, Bree, and blah, blah, skippy, woo, woo. And Ados is over there back and forth in her mentions, blah, blah, skippy, woo, woo. For what? Like, I can't figure it out. (laughs) I can't either. I can't either. And and that that is the thing, because that said we should be on Twitter following our politicians but it seems like we're doing 
either we're fighting with each other or we're fighting with people who really don't matter in the scheme of things. So why are we even doing this? What is the point of it? You know, it's getting, I don't feel it's being successful. And if you ask me, you know, some folks are right. Like we are acting as if we're a cult or we're online bullying or trolling people. Is this how we want to be seen? We should be seen as a political force that is coming for you when you're out here in the streets talking shit. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. And if we're not doing that, I don't know what we I don't know what's the point. I don't know what the point is. Here's the thing. The point is is to get back to the work. I actually <clears throat> did I actually did a broadcast where I took Dr. Darity's rewrite of HR 40 and broke it down line by line. I, sh- I wanted to see that video go nuts for ADOS folks. And I thought it would, and no one did. And I, I tweeted that out there. I don't, I'm like, the, like your show on, on Wednesday, that should be viral. I mean, that, Mark, we're in a void. When I looked at that, I'm like, God damn, we are fucked right now. And no one cares. But you know what? Though? That's what a we brother, should all a be brother, concerned about. A brother attacked Antonio with a broadcast and said, if he didn't say nothing else that was true, did say one true thing, that it is time to regroup and introspect. And nobody took that away from that broadcast. They watched two hours if you watch the whole thing, because I watched it actually twice. And even if I didn't agree with anything he said during the broadcast, I'm not going to say whether I agree with him or not. I don't think it matters, right? There was one, at least one good thing I was able to take away from that broadcast. And that is, is that fam, if you really care about this work, Brother Black is not lying when he said that it is time for us to, to husband our energies to regroup to get ourselves back on our square, to get back on what we all got involved with this thing to begin with. And if you couldn't take that from that broadcast, you were not listening. Because I listened to everything, whether I agreed with it or not. You feel me? So the thing is, right. is at the end of the day, fam, we are going to, we are going to have to, we are going to have to just get past the personality including mine. I don't want to be a person. I just want somebody that's bringing some good information, some inspiration every so often and, and, you know, helping to further this work as best I'm able. Right. That's what I want to be. And we're going to have to make the choice. We're going to have to make the choice. If they hold a beef and nobody shows up, there you go. Right. Enough said. Right. So, Sister right. Sherry, man, I thank you so much for your input. I really do I appreciate thank you, you as always. And thank you for doing the work. <laughs> thank you. Thank you for doing that. the work. I, I, I try. I hope to remain worthy. I, you know, it's difficult because I, I got people coming at me crazy, but you know, it is what it is. I'm thick skinned. I can take, I can take a little bit of heat. It's all good. Right. You know what I'm saying? But bring the heat to me and then go do the work. I don't care. Like you want to come on my chat and tell me, Mark, you're stupid. You are, you a stand. Um, you don't get it. You don't know enough. Fine. Throw it at me. I can take it. Right. Come here. Right. Drop the bomb and then go back and do the work. Because Jason even said that exactly. during the broadcast. He said, continue to do the work. He said, continue to be out there on your advocacy. He made his opinion clear. He's not riding with those two. Fine. What does that got to do with? with any of the work that the chapters are doing or any individuals are doing or any of the politicians that are, are coming and, and uh, participating with various ADOS chapters and groups, what does that got to do with any of that? Nothing. Right. If exactly. And it does about what's, what was said by Jason Black or whatever, let Tone address that. He grown. And that's the thing. It's between them two. Who cares? Up to the point, it's like it doesn't it doesn't really matter anymore. Okay, it's like they're both grown ass men. Let them handle it. I don't care if they start throwing fists at each other. That's their business. It has nothing to do with reparations. Does they have to? What we need to start asking ourselves is: Is this going to uh, close that 
not even gap. It's a void. It's a chasm. It's a chasm. Is it going to close this? Right. Is it going to close that? If it's not, then we need to leave it alone and let people handle their business. You know, I, I, if these I, I two grown ass men want to fight each other, go ahead. If Tariq wants to fight Yvette and Tom, let them. If Jason wants to fight Yvette, and Tom, they they're grown. They're grown people. They can take care of it. They no one fights my fights them. for me. They was right, grown when exactly. I met them, sister. So <laughs> if they're not grown enough to handle their own beefs, they get in. I don't know what to tell them. It's it's hard out here right. being us. You know what I'm saying? Like right. You know, I, if I was so worried about what people say about me, I wouldn't be on YouTube. I could be doing anything else other than this, right? So if if, if I'm, right. I'm uh, you know, if I was so thin skinned that I couldn't take a little critique, a little heat, right? Like I know Reggie from Boston. He's he's fam, right? And he he's like he's gonna ride with Yvette and Tom. So he's gonna come over here and he's gonna advocate for them. And I know that. And this is his place for him to do that. I don't have no shade for the brother. You feel me? I don't have no shade for anybody who's a partisan of a particular uh, individual, whatever the case may be. What I say is, is that your partisanship cannot come before the work. And if it is, that's a problem for you and a problem for us. Exactly. And and like I said, you know, they're grown. Let them handle their business on their own. It has nothing to do with us. And we need to stop with the hero worshiping, you know, this idolatry of folks. Yvette and Tom and Tariq in his way and Jason Blake, they've all led us to the same place, okay? It's not about them. It's about us. And so that's what we need to focus on, us as a people. I couldn't and agree this more. Stuff, you are the power it behind does not this thing. Everybody thinks we're the influencers. We're we everybody thinks that the voices of the new black media are the influencers. If we spoke and none of y'all showed up, we wouldn't influence a damn thing. Y'all the power, y'all exactly. the engine that drives all of this. Y'all deserve all the kudos. If you want to start handing out titles and accolades and props and so on and so forth, if you've been out there doing the work, you want to give props to somebody, go stand in your mirror and give props to the person you see in that mirror because you're the one who's the power. Yep. Yep. That's it. But I, I, I got to say, I, I told you before how I felt <laughs> when I first called in. <laughs> what I, you know, how I felt about certain things and personalities, yeah. and the, and we have to be real because no revolution is bloodless. When it when them bullets are coming your way, is Tony and Yvette going to be on the front line with you? And we have to think about that. Yeah. Who are we? When you turn to look at over your right shoulder or your left shoulder, who's going to be standing next to you? Because I don't think either one of them are, because they are both off their squares right now. If you ask me, you know, I, 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 I feel really you, sister. I feel you. I haven't turned have, in, I haven't tuned in to any of the broadcasts where they, like, I've been seeing on Twitter the sassy blue check thing or whatever. That, that was shameful to me. I'm like, whatever. I don't, I'm not, I'm, whatever. I'm cool. You see what I'm saying? It's, it's, it is right. what it is. You know, like at some points, at, at some point, we're going to have to, we're going to have to like get back on what we own. You know what I'm saying? Right. And, and it is right. what it is. So, hey, I appreciate you, sister, and for your voice. I appreciate you calling in and thank you so much for letting us know where you are. Well, thank you for letting me then. Of course. It was my pleasure, my <laughs> honor. Don't be a stranger, all right? Okay. Have thank a good you, night. Sister. Peace. All right, I want to take uh, now. I know CJ's back. I know you had to do a, a run, so if you' ready to call in, CJ, I'm gonna take your call and then flex, and then I'm gonna wrap it up so that y'all can be um, enjoying the rest of your weekend, fam. And by the way, whether you agree with me or not, fam, I want to say thank you to all of you. You could be spending your time somewhere else doing something else, but you're not. You're here with me, and I really appreciate you. Calling from 216, it's your man Mark Black. What's your name? Where you calling from? And what's on your mind? Hey, Mark Black, just the cool man out the here. Cool How man. you doing? Hey, the cool man. Well, I guess I'm going to keep taking calls because y'all want to chop tonight. Go ahead, the cool man. The floor is yours, fam. Yeah, you know, um, I just want to say that, you know, I think that the thing, things went downhill, and you alluded to it earlier. It went kind of south 
when they came up with the down ballot strategy and without 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 really when they don't want it through the people to see how they felt about it and i i even called you that show and i i mentioned now i said why don't we put this up to a vote vote or anything she's like just do this for me fam. just do this i knew at that point i was like if, if we if we go on if you if you're gonna have maybe one or two people making strategy that's not really a smart thing we need to vote on this and then we move as a collective i said it's going to come back to haunt them in the future if they're gonna if they're gonna operate like that. The cool man, you know what? They made fun of Jay Morrison because of plebiscite, 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 right? And and rightfully so. He was on some strange shit with yeah. that, right? But right. what a plebiscite is, is simply a vote, right? I would love, as a matter of fact, I might make it a pet project or something, I don't know. But I would love for us to have a website where we could go register where we can put up various issues and we can actually vote on the shit. Like if we're talking about voting and becoming politically active, right? Let's, let's, you know, charity starts at home. Let's start actually making that happen within ourselves. We don't need external candidates or external uh, uh, referendums to practice voting on and so on and so forth, right? We can set up our own website for plebiscites initiative referenda that affect us directly that we can come and register on and do a vote boom you see what i'm saying and then i'm with you Mark. you feel me like this is my yeah. point this is the point that I'm, I'm trying to make fam is that at every step of all of this fuckery there have been solutions that have been right there staring people in the face but once we start getting ego and partisanship involved, guess what happens? Nothing happens. We get rancor, we get toxicity, we get drama. You see what I'm saying? So the thing is, is that either we're for the solutions or we're for the fuckery. Like those two things are mutually exclusive. One cannot exist in the presence of the other because when you have solutions, there's no place for, for drama, for mess. Right, but if you have right. a mess, and if, if and you're looking for if you're looking for a place for solutions, exactly. If you're looking for solutions, you'll find them. You know exactly. what I mean, Mark? And exactly. so, and, and one of the problems I have with with Yvette and Tone is that it seems like they're very they're very easy to be critical of other people, but they don't seem to be able to be critical of themselves. You know, and like. I, one of the things I think that we should do is I like the idea of the code. I haven't read the book, but the little that you put up there, mm -hmm. it's really good. I think that, I mean, Tariq doesn't, he talks about the code, but you show that, you know, he's far from the code. But I think that we can set some boundaries to these things on how we're going to deal with one another publicly and privately. Agreed. Agreed. And, not, and I think that's not Neely Fuller's code, I understand. But at some point, fam, we do need to talk about our interaction with other the toxicity mm -hmm. that exists due to some of our pathologies people because that's a real thing right Do shout out to dr degrew right uh, so mm -hmm. we, we have these things that we do need to account for in our interactions and we need to have some sort of structure some sort of codification if you will of our interactions that take out the guesswork so that we don't have to sit here and be, you know, talking about, oh, this person's on code. No, that person's off code. This way. No, the code should be just the code. And it don't need to be this long, elaborate thing. It could be, you know, two or three things or whatever, but specific, clear things that all of us in our interactions practice on a daily basis, whether public or private interactions with people of our tribe, of our lineage, right, that we yeah. adhere to. You see what I'm saying? So, no, I think it's perfectly reasonable to demand that we find some way to make that crack. You feel me? And rather than yeah. um, than sitting here, another thing, fam, that I know that you appreciate the cool man, because I've talked about this before, but another thing that I would like for us to stop doing as political advocates is let's stop assuming that people know exactly what it is that we're talking about. Even if it's been in a video before or something like that, right? People learn in different ways, right? Sometimes it's only the difference of a word, right? That could be the key to unlocking understanding or not understanding, right? We need to show a right. hell of a lot more patience with people, fam, when it comes to um, 
when it comes to education. In other words, we got a group of people that are boots on the ground, right? That are actually out there doing active advocacy that are getting up in politicians' faces and stuff like that. And that's exciting work. But we still need people that kind of stay back like myself and just educate. Like there's no term that I'll use during a broadcast that if I think is in any way confusing, I won't continue to reiterate and redefine and say it multiple ways. And I'll even do a layout or something if I have to on the teaching screen to explain the concept. I'll use metaphor, I'll use similes and so on and so forth. And I'll repeat it ad nauseum, right? Until the people get it. Why? Because that's my lane. I like educating people. I like information with people. And so we still need, we still need brothers and sisters who are part of our political advocacy, whether it's this way or that way or whatever, who's, who kind of stay, even in the army, right? You've got infantry people and, and cab scouts and tankers that are out on the front line, but behind the line, in the rear with the gear, you got cooks, you got transportation people, you got mechanics, you got so on and so forth, right? The army is powerful, not because of the people that are out in front, it's powerful because of the people that are in the rear, the ones who are providing the support for the fighters out in the front, right? And we, we need that like yesterday. I think we got so excited about sort of the groundswell that was happening and the effects, the clear effects that we were seeing on our of what we were doing on the real world that we kind of all ran out front and then we looked back behind us like, who's got our back? And it's like, oh, shit. Um, uh-oh. Right? You know what I'm saying? So like some mm -hmm. of us need to fall back and hold up the rear and you know kind of continue to do that that education piece. Right? So I, I want to know what you think about that. No, 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 I agree with you hundred percent. I think I think once we I think once we get our values and our principles and how we're gonna deal with one another set, uh I think that, that will fall in line because one of the things we have to realize is that we're all students in this. Nobody knows it all, okay? And if we, as Adolf, if we have that as our mindset, then when somebody comes to us that knows less than us, we're more than willing to share what we know. Oh, absolutely. You know what I'm saying? I mean, you know what inspires me, fam, is, is Yeshua saying greatest, the greatest among you is the one who serves, right? In other words, we've been taught to measure success in a lot of different ways in a lot of different fora, right? But I would argue that for us in this transformational moment or so on and so forth, right? Is that we, we need to be mindful of that, that sometimes the accolades to go to the ones who are doing the, who are, who are, who are doing the, providing the most service, right? Who are being of the most service. Right. And so on and so forth. You feel me? So, um, yeah. 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 I, I mean, even I, Jesus talked about let, let he who wishes to be the best among you be your servant. Exactly. He about that exactly. Great. I mean, that 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 literally drives me to do what I do. I My whole mode, motivation, my whole MO is just simply to be of service. I realize that not everybody is going to agree with maybe my methods of service or how I provide it, whatever the case may be. And that's that's OK. Right, they have a home here too. Right, I don't need I don't need just yes people and 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 people bigging me up. As a matter of fact, I want people to be coming at me and say, "Hey, brother Black, you you need to be looking at this or whatever the case may be." You feel me? So yeah, absolutely, man. I I think oh, Alexis said a really good point in the chat. Alexis said we are being forged in the fire. It's all a part of the refinement process. I think the term that uh, that I want to leave with all of us every time we do a broadcast is grace, right? Mm -hmm. That doesn't mean necessarily accepting bad actors, but that means that in the absence of malice, right, grace is warranted, right? In the absence of a clear, you know, motivation from malice, because we're kind of learning this stuff on the fly, we need to extend a lot of grace. You feel me? I, I continue to extend grace or whatever the case may be. So, you know, I, I hope that we we take that and uh, and make that a key part of what we do. Absolutely. I want to make two points and then I will go. Okay. One is this. I think that um, 
and I, I've, I've felt this way for a long time, Mark, is that we need to do two things. We need to uh, really flesh out what reparations entails. What, what is it for us? Okay, we need to know that. We need to be grounded in that. And secondly, we need to, we need to be grounded in the planks of a black agenda. So, so that by the time the summer of 2020 comes around, any politician that wants our vote in the coming November, we have what we don't, and we have exactly, we can tell them exactly what we want and put it on the table and, and tell them uh, and see if they, if they uh, will, you know, uh, be for that or not. And we know whether we're going to support you know that person cool or not. Man, but they know exactly where we're coming from. The cool man, there's some people that would disagree with you. There's some people that would say ADOS 101 is exactly what you just described. And I would say that ADOS 101 isn't what I thought I was signing up for. I went there and took a look at it. Reparations is on the bottom of the list, and that was the thing I signed up for and where my advocacy goes first and foremost. I think that that should be listed first and last on that list. But I wasn't consulted uh, when, right. when the agenda was developed. Nobody was oh, consulted when the agenda If you go to the website, the and it almost puts you to sleep before you get, you, know, you go to the website, and you almost put to sleep before you get down to reparations. I mean, I, I mean, it's, you know, that's why instead of talking about blue hashtags and all this kind of stuff, we need to be going week after week, fleshing it out, going over different authors and ideas about what a reparation is and put it together, have a body, have it settled, you know what I'm saying? Discuss it among us so that it's not coming from up high, but it's coming from down below. I couldn't agree more, and fam. I couldn't agree more. One Thank more you. thing. Oh, I forgot. Yeah, I forgot. My, uh, and, and that black agenda as well. You know, we may, yeah, you need to absolutely. have that. Absolutely. So, and I think, and I think, Mark, that's why when you tune in from week to week here, Yvette is talking about all kind of things, and it's just like you know, it's just willy nilly, and you know, it's, it's blowing in the wind instead of we 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 should still be setting our foundation, and they're not doing that. So I'm going. Hopefully, I'm going to uh, uh, you know. Oh, oh, one more thing. This is what I wanted to say to Lee. I'm hoping, and I'm very very optimistic here that you know it's the end of the year. Maybe we have some, we were harboring some things uh, this year as, as, as the year progressed. And I'm hoping that we get it all out of our chest. Everybody say what they have to say. And as we go into the new year, let's go ahead and fight for what we what we started out, which is reparations and, uh, and the upliftment of black folk. I think we can do that. I think, you know, that this will pass. And I hope, I'm hoping we will continue along the path. I feel you, fam. And with that, I'm going to let you go, Mark. No, I appreciate you, fam. Thank you so much for that. Let's see here. Um, I wanted to address what Reggie was saying in the chat. Reggie, if you'd love to give me a call, brother, you know you always welcome, right? Um, but in you know, in case you don't give me a call, I do want to address your comments because uh pretty influential cat, and that's that's giving you propers, by the way. I hope you know that. There's no shade there. But Reggie, not everybody is going to be able to be a part of a chapter. This is not to say that you're not, you know, that you're wrong. Uh, caller from 216 is your man, Mark Black. What's your name, where you call calling from, and what's on your mind? Hey, Mark. It's Nigel calling from Akron. Hey, Nigel. How you Welcome, doing? sister, to the broadcast. I appreciate you. Go ahead and uh, and uh, talk to us. The floor is yours. Okay. So what the previous caller was saying, I'm not trying to put you on blast, brother. I love you. And we love to have you. But the place to vent is with your chapter. You have a chapter in Cleveland, in Akron. Akron and Cleveland chapters are together. We would love to have you. We would love to talk to you. We would love to build with you. Sister Nigel, but do me a favor. Pop- make sure you pop that information in the chat for those, because I want to make sure I give exposure to as many of the chapters as possible, as you well know. Right. So please make sure you pop that information into the chat and share it to anybody who might be interested. Okay. You can find us on Twitter at ADOS Akron, or you can find us on Facebook at ADOS ADOS Akron. Yes, at ADOS Akron. A-K-R-O-E. Got it. I just popped it in the chat for you, sister. Thank you. Thank you very much. Mm -hmm. The problem is what I'm seeing is Yvette and Tom are just laying the groundwork, the basic foundation for what we're supposed to carry out. When you get with their group, when you get with their chapter, 
and what they were pushing with joining with uh, Project Takeover and possibly finding other ADOS people within the NAACP or the Urban League, you get together and you do the data for your area Mm -hmm. and you make a determination about what the most pressing needs are in your area. You got to link up with people in order for this to really work. You can't be out here solo dolo thinking like, oh, yeah, I just talked to people about it. So I did work and throw your hands up and walk away. You got to get with other people. Yeah. And when you get with those other people, you establish what your code is. You establish what your agenda is. You, you gather your information. You assess that information. And then you make a determination about how you're going to go after politicians, mm-hmm. how you're going to attack problems within your own community. You can't sit on Twitter with your Twitter fingers and talk about, well, I don't need anybody. I can do this. I don't have a leader. You got to show up. Here, here's, here's the thing about me. I was an NCAA D1 athlete. I ran track and field. It's an individual sport. But it doesn't mean very much when you win yourself and your team doesn't win. I want my team to win. And my team are the descendants of slavery in America. That's who I'm advocating for. And that's who I'm fighting for. And when you fight, you got to understand, you're going to get hit. you got to be willing to take on some of the risk. That's why, that's why if out of everybody, I follow Iron Man the hardest. Because Iron Man constantly talks about the risk that he's taking by doing his program and by speaking the way that he speaks. And he talks about other people who have historically taken risks and either caught a bullet or they went to jail. It's just part of, it's just part of the course. You know, Sister uh, Nigel, I will be the first one to tell you, I live in an area where there's hardly any ADOS people who are um, up on this political advocacy. The few people that I've met, because I live in the Pacific Northwest, right? The land of the white liberals, right? Near Seattle. So the few uh, ADOS people, uh, you know, people who are descendants of slavery here that I've met, I haven't been able to coordinate with them as, as of yet, right? And I intend to do that. Here's the thing, though. When I'm talking about education, there's a multitude of ways to educate that doesn't necessarily require that somebody, for lack of a better way to say it, adheres to someone else's political philosophy. And the reason why I'm I'm stressing that, Sister Nigel, is this. Let's be frank. There are a lot of people that ADOS appears now as if it is basically a democratic reform program. Now, let me define what I mean by that. When I say democratic, I'm referring to the political party of the Democrat. When I say reform, it means to change the party, right? To change the Democrat. That's an issue. Because at this particular point, a Democrat wouldn't get my vote for dog cat. But if you... If you listen to people who are ADOS advocates and proponents under the current um, the current milieu, there's no real home for those people because they will not adhere to a democratic down ballot strategy for voting. Some of them even question the validity, including uh, Eddie Glaude himself, who disavowed his own strat for down ballot voting, the one that he advocated for in 2016 but prior to Trump's election, right? So while I get that there should be political education on the ground level where people can get together and meet with each other and stuff like that, I think it is patently unfair to do two things. One, to assume that everybody that comes is going to be down with what, again, I'm only speaking from appearances. People can say what they like, but if it walks like a duck and it talks like a duck, people are going to question what is it, right? It looks like that we're trying to reform the Democrats, that we're trying to push so much pressure on the Democrats that they'll just do what we want. But anybody who tries to, say, engage with Republicans or who are already conservative or right-wing ADOS folk don't have a home in the current political push a home in the political current the current political milieu that ADOS is advocating. If there is going to be localized education of people politically on different strats and things like that, I think that it has to be in some way 
down, not down ballot, I'm sorry. Um, that has to be nonpartisan, right? Because not yeah. all ADOS people are progressive left-wing Democrats. And I don't think that's yeah. a fair um, attribution to ADOS, the hashtag ADOS advocacy in the first place. And second of all, it's cutting hashtag ADOS advocacy off from other avenues that could be pursued, in my humble opinion, right? So I'm with you, right, that I would love to see more people engage with the chapters. As a matter of fact, I've been one of the biggest pushers for the creation of the local chapters and things like that. I big them all up constantly. I, I love to see the growth of it. But Sister Nigel, if you can, if you're able to, can you address kind of where, where you think, uh, you know, based off of what I just said, where you think I'm coming from and what do you think about what I said? I think to the very quick eye that's kind of darting in and out, that's what it looks like. But it, question in the chat, who remembers the episode that Yvette did where she had the Trump hat? Who, who actually remembers that? Because I, I had to watch that one a few times because when I first saw it, I got pissed off. Like, what's she doing with the Trump hat? But I had to sit there and digest it in order to understand. When Trump does something good, you put the hat on. When Trump messes up, you take the hat off. She did that with Bobby Rush and um, co-signing that Comcast should be broken up. She didn't agree with everything that Com uh, Bobby Rush had done. But she was like, yo, he did good. I'm going to put the hat on. Yo, he sucks. Mm -hmm. Take the hat off. Uh, Michael Harriet, when you wrote that piece about Buttigieg, she put her hat on for Michael Harriet because she was like, you know what? He's got it. I'm riding with you here. I'm here with you. This is good. This is good. Excellent. The data proves what he's saying is true. And then when he said, oh, I don't have any solutions. I don't think any president, politician, anybody can fix it. I can't, I can't give anybody solutions. He took the hat off. And that's what we have to do when we're approaching politicians, whether they're Democrat or Republican or independent. The point is for all of us to go to these politicians, whether your chances are probably better if you show up in, as a group of 15, but even if you're going in there by yourself, you ask the question, what are you going to do for black people? What have you done for black people? How do you intend on fixing things for black people? If they have a good answer or you can find work that shows that, that supports what their answer is, you can put the hat on, vote for them. Nonpartisan, doesn't matter. Democrat, Republican, independent, whatever. Yeah. Green Party, Libertarian, if they suck. Or, you know, they're just paying you a whole bunch of lip service or they're just trying to give you a whole bunch of garbage or they say, I ain't got to do shit for black people. You take the hat off because what did that say? You vote when you go out and vote. It's not just about who you vote for. It's about who you vote against. You have to. When we talk about doing the work, you got to look into these people fully. I don't I, I don't have anything for the people who are just sitting on Twitter going after the blue check. I don't care about that. I hear you on that one. You, you can do that. That's how you choose to spend your time throughout the day. Fine. I ain't paying for your glasses if your eyes go bad. That's on you. But what I'm doing here is I want people who are going to sit and learn from me because I could, I could easily stay at home and just read by myself. Like Eddie Glau Jr. in the video that he had with Politics and Pros, he got the idea for down ballot voting from a book called Seeing by Jose Saramanga. It's on Amazon for like 10 bucks. Mm -hmm. I'm pretty sure you can get it for free if you got an uh, Audible subscription. <laughs> Real quick. But you, you can easily sit at home and do it by yourself. If that's what you choose to do, that's on you. I'm nobody's mama except for my child. But I can't, I can't get out of my own head, and I need people. Why aren't we talking about the black community? Don't we need each other? If you can meet up with people, meet up with people. Because you know what? The first couple of times that I met up with other ADOS people, 
the vast majority of our meetings, we vented. Everybody had all this pent up energy. People felt like they couldn't talk to their families about it. They weren't able to get through to their families. They couldn't get through to their partners. They couldn't explain to people at work. And it's like this scene is that and Tone and Professor Black, Ruth, Reed, and uh, Jason Black have exposed people to something. And when we finally get into the place, we vent. And it's cathartic for us. I, I, I cannot agree more. I think of all the things that I've heard about from the chapter, Sister Nigel, the energy that's there when you are in front of people that you spend your time, your efforts, your energy advocating for, where you can hear their gratitude being expressed to you. You can see their desire to work on your behalf. I think that's price. I, I think that's, there's no value that you can put on that, right? And I know that seems like a bunch of emotional, you know, fall to all, whatever. And, I, and people who would say that, whatever. I think that that right there is going to be part of the fuel that drives the engine of this advocacy. So I couldn't agree with you more that people do need to hook up with each other. I, are there critiques about maybe partisanship as far as politics goes? Yes, and I've expressed it. And people are, are welcome to or whatever the case may be. But I think that you're absolutely right, which is why I support the growth of the chapters so much, because I definitely want to see more of us getting together and having that personal connection along with the newly found frame, that new lens through which we view politics, economics, so on and so forth. I think that's immensely yeah, and I think we have, we've only just begun. We're just getting out the gate with this. Everybody has to learn how to be patient with this. And you don't have to go out there waving your sword, going after anybody and everybody who, who may be FBA, who may be ADOS, who may be V1. This person said this about this person. Like you said, they're grown. I don't have time for it. I don't have mm -hmm. energy for it. I'm tired from trying to figure out things within my own group. Yeah, this ain't no, that's life, as we say, it's hard. Yeah. We got a husband We're and all, energy. Yeah, and we've only got, I mean, we black out here. You only get both like one, maybe two shots to get it right. And this is our opportunity to get it right. Lay down your sword. Pick up that they were her property, and I, I'll admit to y'all, I'm I'm dreading reading this, but I'm ready for it because yep. it's it's time, it's time. Time. We need to we need to be willing to open up our minds. Sister Nigel, do me a favor. Post in the chat the name of that book that you said Eddie Glaude got the down ballot strap from. Easy be easy's interested in it, and I know other people will be too. Sister, was there anything else that you wanted to get off your mind here? Again, you 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 said a word, and I, I can't thank you enough. Uh, the book is called uh, "Seeing" by Jose Sar Saramago. Now, I'm I'm warning everybody. I haven't read the book all the way, but the way that it's written, it's funky. It's a really funky, weird book. Like the sentences run on for like full long paragraphs. Sister, do you know how to do you know how to spell Aramago? Because I'll go ahead and type it in the chat right now. Seeing by, by, by Saramago. Thank you, thank you, Flex Caliber. I appreciate it. Uh -huh. Sister, right, I, I appreciate I, I appreciate you. You you gave us a word, and I can't thank you enough. Um, I really do appreciate. You. Glad to do it. If, as leaders, I, I just want to remind everybody: as leaders, your first job is to serve. Serve your people. Facts. Have you done service for the people? That's all I got. Have a good one. You too, sister. Thank you so much. Oh man, fam, it, we we rolling in the nearly three plus hours, and I I I would keep doing it to be honest. But I know y'all probably ready to to go ahead and fade to black. But I think I kind of want to end it on that call because, fam, regardless of who's broadcasting what, regardless of who's throwing shade at who. Let's not lose sight of what we're all about. By the way, Tim Samore, thank you so much, man. I really do appreciate the love and support. Um, 
There are those who will say that there are people who are being intellectually lazy, like my man Reggie, and he's absolutely right, fam. You have to do the work. Look, this is not to say that we shouldn't make resources available for right, which is what I've been advocating for. There needs to be continuing educational resources available for political advocacy and for political education, right? That being said, Brother Reggie's not wrong. There's a lot of yous who are still fence sitting, who are still waiting on the sidelines, hoping to just hear a good word from your favorite influencer or whatever the case may be. The fact is, is that at the end of the day, this battlefront, needs all of us some of us are going to be support wing he could have called in i hope he does i would love to have that discussion with him, right but some of us will be support wing some of us will be combat wing but all of us are needed in this battle against uncle sam and our justice right there's nobody nobody that we can afford to leave behind period and i've been saying that and i'm gonna continue to say that right so with that said, I didn't shout out Dr. Lili. Thank you so much, sister. I've been seeing you in the chat. You've been doing work. I appreciate you here as always. Fam, I, I love you. You probably don't hear it nearly as much as you need to, but I love you. Whether you are a partisan, whether you're not, whether you are up on this advocacy, whether you're not, whether whatever, I don't care. If you share my heritage and you share my lineage, we're going to find a way to get you on board with what needs to be done. Because we need you, fam. We need all of you. Every single one of you. We need Republican. We need Democrat. We need political savvy. We need political neophyte. We need every. And I hope that if you haven't found a place where you feel like that all voices can be shared and respected, where you can get the chance to get what's on your mind off your mind in a positive fashion, where even if you disagree, there's good discussion rather than beef, and you found it right here with the angry black sheep, because we're not going anywhere. So fam, thank you so much as always for the love, for your time, for your eyeballs, for your minds, some of you, for your hearts, the other ones, I hope to win it, right? And I'm going to leave you, as I always do, with wishes of love, peace, prosperity, and power, real power to our people. Mm -hmm.